Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Alex Curry here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. How are we doing today, guys? Happy Friday. Yeah, good. Bo Matthew Stafford looked good last night, didn't he? <laughs> I didn't notice. You did notice. You did notice. It's going to be another Sunday, another big cowboy win, which means it's going to be another tough Monday for all those cowboy haters out there, starting with you. That's all that matters because the Cowboys are better than the Rams. You know it and I know it. You're getting excited about beating if you beat the Giants. The Giants have found themselves at New Orleans. This is going to be really tough good. for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we are in for a great weekend because we are just a day away from the historic rematch of Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder on Fox Sports pay-per-view. Fury is confident he'll retain the belt, saying the fight won't go to the distance and he'll make Wilder quit. Now, on the other side, Wilder called himself rejuvenated and said he is dedicated to, quote, reinventing himself. So, Shannon, how much of a shot do you give Deontay Wilder this time? Well, Skip, he always has a shot because he can turn the lights out with one punch. And in the heavyweight division, that's kind of how, that's why people gravitate towards that, because one punch can end the fight. And Deontay Wilder has that kind of punching power. Um, the question is, and, 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 in the read, she read it. He's going to reinvent himself. Can he? I've seen a dozen of his fights, and they all the same way. He fights one style. That's what he knows. He's a puncher. He's not a he's not a, a boxer. He's a puncher, and he's looking to land that one big shot to get you out of there. Yep. The question is, can he? Fury is really really smart. And he's had an opportunity to see him twice. Fury is a boxer, and he's very skilled, mm-hmm. and he knows the traps that. Deontay Wilder is trying to lay for him, mm-hmm. and he does a great job of staying away. Now, he did get caught in the first fight, but in the second fight, he dominated. At no point in time did you think, man, Deontay Wilder is winning this fight, or this fight fight is close, or Deontay Wilder can win it. Yeah, we know he can turn the lights out with one punch, but the way Fury was making him look, it was almost like, man, why are you even winning? The, the, how, how did they even make this fight happen? I mean, because it's like he was just toying with him. Yep. And so to reinvent himself, can he reinvent himself after he's had so much success doing it that way? Skip, look, I, I think the only way that Deontay Wilder can win this fight is that he knocks him out. I don't believe he's skilled enough as a boxer to go 12 rounds and outpoint Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. Tyson Fury can win this fight in a multitude of ways because he's the more skilled of the fighters. Yes, he can win by points. Yes, he can knock him out. We just saw it the the last time they fought. So for me, Skip, I'm not as confident in Fury as I once was because once I heard he was going to come in the ring at damn near 300 pounds, at some point in time, rounds five, six, seven, if if Wilder can get it to the deeper rounds, Stamina is going to have to play a, a, a role in that. Yeah, you're bigger, stronger, but you got to carry that weight around for three minutes in those rounds. So it's not like all of a sudden you 200, 300 pounds, and that's not going to be a factor because I do believe it will be a factor. The question is, can Deontay Wilder box him long enough to get it to those later rounds so he can land that power shot okay. and turn the light out on Fury? All right. I don't believe he can. I'm going to I'm gonna say uh, Fury wins in a decision. Mm-hmm. Are you? I am. Okay. A decision just... Points. Okay, I know, but just uh, will he win easily? Like he? No, I don't think it'll be. Ask. I don't think it'll be as easily as he won last time, Skip. Because, like I said, an extra twenty pounds. That's got to play some role. He can't be as quick. He can't because his stamina was impeccable last mm-hmm. last game or uh, last time around. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it goes. I think it, that's the only way. That's the only way. He can win the fight by knocking uh, uh, Wilder out. He can win the fight fight by points. I think Wilder's only chance is to catch him with something in the okay. later rounds. But, but you're making the case that Tyson Fury will again win fairly easily. Right? I think yeah, not as easily as he won the first time. Okay. Not as easy, but I do but I do think because he's the more skilled of the fighters, yep. he can win a multitude. He he can be a chameleon. He can do a lot of different things where I think uh, Deontay Wilder is relegated to this lane right here, which okay. is land that one big shot. Okay. I got you. My turn. I'm going to preface everything I'm about to say by making the point that I think our longtime viewers will appreciate. I have always been my own man. I am not a company man. (laughs) This fight is obviously a Fox production. Right. 
everything I'm about to say has nothing to do with this being a Fox production. Okay. It has to do with my gut instinct on this fight. Uh oh. <laughs> I believe Wilder is going to get his revenge. Whoa, whoa, wow. I believe it because I believe Wilder is at the rightest place at the rightest time. Okay. It reminds me a little bit of the sequence that we just saw in the National Football League, in which we saw the Los Angeles Rams be in the perfect spot, the right place at the right time to take advantage of the Buccaneers, the defending champs, whose minds and hearts were already going to Foxborough okay. for the following Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And then we saw the Arizona Cardinals be at the rightest place at the rightest right. time because they caught the Rams at home after the Rams had won their Super Bowl against the defending champ Buccaneers. Okay. It, it just matters about your mental state at that but moment. At the time that you're right? fighting, yep. It is so much mental. This is mano a mano, but it's mind versus mind. And all of a sudden, I'm reading the tea leaves on Tyson Fury, and I don't love his mental state at this point because let's step back and look at it. He did not want this fight. Right. He, he so you was, don't believe he took the fight serious? Well, he, he can't because in his he, he's high IQ, obviously, because he is a highly skilled, huge boxer. Yes. At 6'9", now going on 300 pounds. <laughs> and obviously, the last time we saw these two, Tyson Fury was clearly the bigger and better boxer. Right. It was as simple as that. He was way too big and way too skilled for... A Deontay Wilder, who's not a small man, he's six feet, seven inches tall. Right. He weighed 231 for the last five. Right. I, I assume he's going to be in that ballpark pretty, pretty for this one, thing. right? Yep. Okay, but he is what he is, and right. he's not going to change, right. to your point. He's going to be exactly what he was in the first two fights. So all of a sudden I say, well, Tyson Fury didn't want this fight to the point it had to go to the arbitrator. Right. And the arbitrator finally said, I'm sorry, the contractual language here says you have no choice. choice. Right. You have to give right. him. If, if he elects, which he did, right. Deontay Wilder said, I want the third fight. Correct. You have to fight him. Well, what, what was his mind and eye and heart on? It was on Anthony Joshua. Yeah, he wanted to fight AJ. Okay. And on September the 25th at the Tottenham Spurs Stadium in London, what happened? <laughs> he got beat. Alexander you know, Usyk, he came out of nowhere, mm -hmm. although he is really good and he's undefeated. Yep. And he caught him at the right place at the right time when obviously Anthony Joshua's head, heart, mind, were going, going, they were going at fury because mm -hmm. it was going to be the biggest money, most epic fight right. in the history of that country. Right. Countryman versus countryman. Correct. And you said the other day, it'd be in Wembley Stadium. It'd yeah. be where, where all the biggest concerts are, all the mm -hmm. biggest soccer matches. Are. It's it. Yes. It would have been it. That's it, it. It could arguably have been the biggest sporting event right. in the history of England, right? right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the bottom falls out because Joshua didn't just lose. He just got absolutely dominated right. from start to finish yes. by Usyk. Right. So, so it's like, how can you sell it now? Well, you can still sell it, but now, not, not the way you could. No, it, it no, won't, no. It won't be epic right. anymore, right? Yeah, because Joshua ain't got no belts. Okay, he's got no <laughs> belts. Okay, so now what's happened to Tyson Fury? Well, he's had COVID twice. And the second time, second bout, cost him this fight for a while because it pushed it back three months until this t tomorrow night. Right, or oh, tomorrow night. And, and now we have the trainer suddenly saying, no big deal. The bigger, the better. So what if we're going to come in 20 pounds right. heavier? 20 pounds? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a ton of weight. Yeah, you, absolutely. We talked about it the other day. Just try carrying around 20 pounds for a while. <laughs> Strap 20 pounds around your midsection and go for a little trot somewhere. And right. See how long you can trot right. with 20 extra pounds on you. <laughs> Boxing is hard. It is the most grueling sport to me of, of all. I don't know if you box some. I boxed in I, high school. And I, I thought after two rounds, my arms were going to fall off. Absolutely. It's That's exactly just, what it feels like. And it, when your arms get tired, what do you want to do, Skip? You want to drop them. And drop when you drop them, what happens? All this is exposed and somebody put a glove upside it. Okay, what else do we know about Tyson Fury? In his past... He's had issues with depression. Mm -hmm. He had issues with addiction. Mm -hmm. He had issues that, that bordered on suicidal. Correct. And he had to come back from being a fat man. Right. He was a fat man. He was way over 300 way, pounds. Way, way, way over, yeah. And 
he got himself right. Right. And the 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 skill was never questioned. Correct. Okay? Correct. All of a sudden, if if you if you roller coaster your weight from all the way down to the two seventy ish range, right. and then all of a sudden now you're you're going all the way back up to the two ninety ish range, we'll see exactly what it is. Right. But it could approach three hundred. And then you made a great point yesterday. Okay, so he makes the way in at 290 and then what happens <laughs> well he's like man i, I kind of had to cut some weight so i wouldn't look so right, bad right at the weigh-in you're gonna have to cut weight to be in the 290-ish right and you don't have to cut it because they're heavyweight so right. it doesn't matter but the point is it matters to your pride and your appearance right, right? correct and then knowing tyson fury he might just say okay enough is enough i gotta go eat right, right? i gotta go have go, yeah you're happy yeah. yeah i'm gonna have me a big old meal yeah so he might show up at fight time closer to who knows i don't know 305 he, yeah he's gonna be three easy okay Th- we'll say three easy all this is shaping up as advantage wilder advantage right. wilder advantage right. wilder because Tyson Fury doesn't even want to do this. Look, he, he's been here and done this before. Right. And let's let's look hard at the two fights. This is the trilogy fight, but it, it doesn't even feel right to call it a trilogy fight because, okay, so Wilder won the first bout mm-hmm. on a split draw. Right. But I watched the fight, and I know what my eye test told me, that Tyson Fury right. was just better. Right. But it was a split draw, and it, it happened because they got to the final round, and, what, and finally Deontay caught him. Correct. And rocked him and dropped him. Yes. Right? And then what happened? Shockingly, Tyson Fury raised himself from the dead, (laughs) didn't he? He just suddenly (laughs) got up. And not only did he get up from looking like he was knocked out. Right. But he actually fought to the finish. He did. And and made it look look like he was just fine. In fact, he sort of took the fight back over. He did. But up to that point, it looked to my eye like... He was winning fairly easily. Mm-hmm. So the cards were one judge gave it to Wilder 115 to 111. Then the other judge gave it 114 to 112 to uh, Tyson Fury. Yeah. And, and then there was a 113 all judge. So right. it's a split draw. Correct. Well, what what's your eye test tell you about the first fight? Mm-hmm. Tyson Fury was just better. Right. Right? Well, what what'd your eye test tell you about the second fight? Mm-hmm. It wasn't even close. You right. used the word toyed with. Yes. He did. So I, I don't love the way Wilder made excuses about the first fight. He fired the great Mark, Mark Breland, Breland for throwing in the towel. Yeah, called him a traitor. Yeah, called him a traitor. He said the man had loaded gloves. <laughs> loaded gloves with some kind of metal in his yeah. gloves or brass knucks underneath. Yeah. And yet his own man, who's still employed in his corner, yeah, yeah. was the man who went over the, and with watched the gloves. Hands. That's what you do. You watch, you watch the man's hands give tape. And he's still there, so I, I don't know how right. that happened. And then he even took a shot at my distant cousin, Kenny Bayless, who was the referee <laughs> that night. He took a shot. Deontay <laughs> Wilder took a shot at him and said he was pro-Fury. Okay, so he's made every excuse in the book, which I do not love. I don't like it either. But I do love one thing about Deontay Wilder. He, he has extreme pride mm-hmm. attached to extreme knockout power. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he got shamed because... The world just said, you don't even belong in the same ring with him. Mm -hmm. And it hurt his pride so badly. I think that hurt worse than the beating he took in the ring. Yeah, because, Skip, if you look at it, he got started at it late. He didn't have the the, the amateur background that a Fury had. He's not the skilled technician that Fury is. But you believe that the COVID bouts maybe had something to do with his training, and he wasn't able to train like he he wanted to. And so that was the excess weight. And that's the excuse that's like, well, we wanted him to be bigger. Well, in actuality, you weren't able to train like you wanted to with COVID. And so the excess weight came from lack of training, not because something that you wanted to occur. Because if I had great success doing it like this, there's no way. I've never heard this before. A fighter had knocks a fighter out at a weight and then he comes back in 20 pounds heavier than the weight that he looked so convincingly in beating the other guy. And the first weight was 270. Yes. Huh? And it 273, to be exact. Right. 273. Right. And everybody said how great he looked. I'm looking, I'm listening to everybody say, I, I've never, we've never seen him look like this. He's in tremendous shape. Okay. And from that, you like, yeah, but you know what? I feel like 290, <clears throat> 295 would be even better. Okay. And, and you've watched and listened to people who have trouble with their weight over time. Yes. You know, kind of once a fat man, you have to keep fighting the fat man oh, yeah, you inside fight, you. Yeah. You got to fight right, it. You right. fight it. And maybe he gave in a little bit to right, it. Right. Maybe it, it shook him up that there's no Joshua right on right. The, the near horizon. Correct. Right. COVID, 
it, I, I got to go do this. I got to go fight this guy Skip, again, and I beat him twice Skip, effectively. You don't, you don't get that big without eating. People say, well, elephant don't eat anything but grass. Yeah, but he eats 600 pounds of it a day. <laughs> That's why he's so big. Hippos, they eat, they eat 300 pounds a day. Right now, mm. 150 pounds a day. Mm. That's why they're big. They only eat grass. Yeah, but you're eating 600 pounds of it. Mm. When you get, give me that size, Skip, you got to eat a lot of food. Yep. And it's like you said, if, when you have a problem with weight, it's just like having a problem with drugs and alcohol every single day. Because that one day, you might, instead of eating the 3,000 calories you're supposed to eat, you eat 10,000. And here we go again. You got to start the, pro- the cycle all over again. Food is an addiction also. It's an addiction. Yeah, I mean, I want. In fact, to me, it's the worst addiction. Yeah. It's the hardest because you, you, you can't, can't live, live without, without it. it. <laughs> so how do you live with just this much of it's, it? Exactly. Well, why, why can't I have more? Right. And then once you have any psychological issues, right. what, what is your desire? You just you want to comfort. What, you what wanna, is, exactly. So whatever the issues are, you figure food can solve that problem. Yeah. And then here we go again. But Skip, like I said, I don't feel as comfortable with Fury in this fight as I felt the last fight, because like I said, in the last fight, I was like, after watching the first fight, I was like, well, damn, unless Wilder lands that big power shot, he can't, he can't be. And, and the thing is, Fury knows. Fury does everything to neutralize that. He know you're trying to lay that trap. He know you're trying to spring that right hand on him. And he just puts the jab in your face, jab in your face, boxing around, real, wheels around him, and he, where he thinks he is, he's not there. For a big man, he's skilled. I don't know if we'll see a big man that size be able to move like he can move. Skip that. He, six Nine is John. No, that, that's LeBron James. Yes, that's, that's LeBron James. I mean, six foot nine. Yep. And, and 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 Wilder is more like a small forward. He's 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 six seven two thirty. So he's a small forward. Okay. Even LeBron is big. LeBron James outweighs uh, uh, Deontay Wilder by, by twenty pounds. Maybe thirty. But no, he's slimmed up. As, as <laughs> blink so, so, right? so he okay, back, yeah. so he okay, back okay, me fifty by yeah. Okay, so how I see it have to unfold if Wilder's going to pull off what would be seen as a huge upset. He has to catch him once early. I'm going to say round two. Right. And it it has to be because Tyson Fury just can't take this seriously enough. Right. In in the back of his mind, it's like, I did this twice and I don't really want to do this again. He doesn't have much respect, I think, for Wilder. He He, does not. He shamed him in the the press conference the other day. Called him mentally weak and fragile right. and excuse maker. So you're going to make him real quick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all that. And yet, Deontay has gotten him once before. It was in the final round of the first bout. But, but he needs to catch him hard flush right. one time right. and sting him and hurt him and get him a little bit on his heels right. so it levels the playing field right. a little bit right. so that Deontay can kind of ease into the fight. Right. With, with some comfort zone mm-hmm. where, where he regains some confidence against him. Okay? I, I agree with you, Skip, because the last fight, Tyson Fury didn't fear him, and he walked him down. He walked and no, him down. And most people don't walk towards don't walk towards Deontay Wilder because he has that kind of he dynamite does. in his hand. Okay. So you're going to have to put some fear like, oh. But he said, Skip, I'm hitting everything. I'm hitting shoulders. I'm hitting body. I'm hitting midsection. I'm hitting everything. But he has to throw. He can't just walk around, just follow Fury around, trying to land that one shot because Fury is not going to let. Fury is much is much too skilled, much too smart of a fighter okay. to just let you load up to okay. land that one shot. Okay, so what did Fury say the other day? I'm going to knock him the f out. Correct. Right? Yes. I think he's going to try to get this over early because it's he's just tired of it. He he wants it to go away. Well, he might be he might be trying to get over Skip because he's tired because yeah, that size saying, you no, don't want to go I, far. I, I agree because he'll know <laughs> I really don't have the stamina right. I had before. Right. So I need to just get this thing over with, which might make him susceptible to catching the one shot. Yes. And listen, they always say about Deontay Wilder. He is the hardest puncher in boxing history. And right. I'll buy it. It's, it's kind of hard to quantify that right. because, man, there were some greats I used to uh, watch. George. Whew. Uh, Ooh, Tyson. Especially Tyson. Jack Johnson. I mean, listen, yeah. You, listen, Ali, young Ali. Yes. Oh, lightning power. I don't know. But, but see, that's but what it was. Ali was more speed. I mean, but, the, but I mean, the speed equated to power. Yes. Okay. Yes. But my point is, I'll give him this hardest puncher ever. Right. Well, he's got to catch him once. And then if this thing can start to go on and on toward, I'm going to go to the ninth round. Right. I believe that Wilder can get him again in the ninth and knock him down and completely right. out. And so the, I think he's going to have to win by KO. Oh, there's no question. That's the only the way ninth, he can win. Yes. In the ninth round. Right. So that's what I got it. Sting him in the second round, rock him and drop him in the ninth round. And the thing is about 
by Wilder's power, it doesn't dissipate. Because remember, Skip, he floored him in the 12th. Yeah. To have still that kind of punching power in the later rounds after yeah. you've been fighting that long. Yeah. So it lets you know he can end the fight at any given time, even in the later rounds. Yeah, we, most most people have power in the early rounds, but as, we, as the fight starts to go, as you start to get tired, yeah. can you still generate that kind of punching power? Deontay Wilder can, but Skip, he's going to have to do better than what he did the first time. He can't just look to land that one shot. Skip, he wasn't throwing any jabs. He wasn't doing anything. He was just looking to load up, try to catch it with that one shot, and fear is like, I'm not, bro, I see that thing coming from yesterday. Seriously? <laughs> I'm, not finna, I'm not finna let you hit me with that. Okay. So I'm not trying to sell the fight, but I will definitely watch the fight because right. I think Deontay oh, Wilder oh, yeah. has a great shot. Yeah, you, you got, I mean, a, a fight like this, Skip, it's, it's still a big fight. No matter what you think of Fury, no matter what you think of Wilder, it is still a ginormous fight. And, and it got a lot bigger when I heard 20 more pounds. Right. That, that's when it got real big to me. But, but now, Skip, this is a more compelling fight. Yep. Was Ant AJ, Anthony Joshua lost? Yep. I agree. Here we go. It's going to be a good one. I can't wait to watch it in person in Vegas tomorrow. I'm so excited. Well, damn, but you get to go, I'm Alex, and we don't get to go. I mean, what's really going on here, Fox? No mercy. After a disappointing blowout loss at home, the Rams were able to bounce back last night and get a win on the road in Seattle. Matthew Stafford had a big night, passing for 365 yards and a touchdown. L.A. is now 4-1 and one, and once again right in the hunt in the NFC West. So, Shannon, on a scale of 1-10, to 10, how impressive were the Rams last night? Skip, I gave them a 7. Um, I give them credit for going on the road in a, on a short week. Seattle is not a very easy place to play. We know what the 12th man represents. We know how the Seahawks play in that building. Also, they were coming off a, a debilitating loss. They didn't just get beat. They got beat up. And so to go on the road on a short week, so basically all you're doing is walking through and you're going on the road and you're playing a Seahawks team. They got an impressive win on the road in San Francisco, one of their division rivals. Mm -hmm. So I give them some credit for that, Skip. But it took them a little, a little while to get going. And Matthew Stafford was missing throws. I was like, well, damn, Matthew. I mean, you you want to hit Cooper Cup because he's wide open. Mm. You 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 want to hit D Jack? D Jack's supposed to have about 600 yards receiving. Mm -hmm. If Matthew Stafford could throw the ball out there, it hit him in stride. Yeah. But hey, it took him a little while to get going, Skip. I mean, he mm. wasn't as sharp as he was against Tampa, and mm. I didn't need him to be. Mm. I just needed him to be sharp against Tampa. As long as he come back out and give that kind of performance, if they play y'all again, mm. I'll be good. All this will be forgiven with Matthew Stafford. Mm. But if you look at the second half, Skip, they put up 301 yards. They had seven plays of at least 20 yards last night, 476 yards of total offense. And so that's the most in their last 20 games. That's a good sign when you don't play your best football and you're still able to put up those kind of numbers. Mm. What's concerning to me is the defense. Skip, that defense is not the same. And they have a lot. Skip, when I look at their safeties, Fuller and Rapp, they played really well last year. They're not playing at that level. I look at Williams, the opposite corner of Jalen Ramsey. He played well last year. He's not even close. Rochelle's a rookie skip. There's no way Gino was supposed to throw that ball to DK Metcalf in the end zone because the DB is right there in between him. And somehow he's getting ready to jump and then realize, oh, man, oh, touchdown. I'm like, bro, what, what are you doing? Mm. So that's concerning. That's con Aaron Donald is going to be Aaron Donald. He's going to make his plays. Mm. But skip, the, the defense is concerning, and it looks to me, especially in the NFC, well, maybe it's just a new thing around the league. We just get into the shootout. Matthew Stafford threw a horrible interception. Skip, I don't know what the hell he was throwing. I mean, like, he took his time, too. He took his time and threw it. Just throw the ball out of bounds. You out of the pocket? He was throwing it to whom? <laughs> I don't know. Nobody. To Quandry Diggs? <laughs> D D uh, oh. Diggs came out of nowhere. Skip, yeah. okay, at this point in time, I got nothing. Just throw it. Look at this. Matthew. He pointing. Who he pointing? You. you do realize the guy in the line green, he's not on your team. So don't <laughs> point him. Why are you pointing to him? Well, then... He's like, yeah, I got you. At first, I thought he was trying to just throw it out of bounds. I don't think he was. No, he wasn't. Because he didn't put a lot of muscle No, on. he did not. He did not. So, for me, Skip, it seems to me that the Rams are going to be perfectly willing to win shootouts. Mm. But here's the thing with shootouts. If you get into a shootout, you need to steal a possession. You can't let the opposing team steal your possession yep. because guess where he threw that ball, Skip? He threw that mm. inter uh, interception in the end zone. Mm. You basically took at least three points. But given the way their kicker was kicking last night, I'm not so sure that was a sure thing. Mm. But anyway, Skip, for me, I gave them a seven. They got off to the slow start. Give them credit for getting it going in the second half. Uh, 
Russ had that gruesome injury. Geno came in, did a great job leading him down the field. And people were like, well, man, look at Geno. Mm. Skip, you know this. When the quarterbacks, you don't prepare for the backup quarterback unless it's a situation like San Francisco where you know yeah. there's the potential that Trey Lance might get into the ball game, yeah. or it's a situation Taysom Hill in New Orleans. He might get into the ball game, but you're not pay- playing for the backup in Tampa. You're not playing for the backup in Dallas. You're not playing for the backup uh, uh, at Baltimore. Mm. So when you don't have, you're not prepared for that, and all of a sudden the guy comes in, you're like, okay, well, well how do we do this? Well, we know that we're trying to box Russ in. Well, what, what do we do with? And you see Geno escaping the pocket, left and right. So. I don't don't put too much in the don't say, oh, we'll be fine. If Russ is not able to play, we'll be fine with Geno Smith. Don't kid yourself. Mm. But give the Rams, I gave them a seven. They got uh they got started a little late, but once they turned it on, that's it, Skip. Once they kick mm. on them jets, them afterburners. Really? Mm. Gotta give you guys can't get to. And you guys, you know who I mean. From what I saw <laughs> last night, my guys are better than quote unquote your guys. No, they're not. The Cowboys are a little better overall team than the Rams are. I just hope they meet in the postseason. We'll, I hope so, we'll too. find out about that. I will give the Rams on the 1 to 10 impressive scale a 2 for last oh night. Oh, my God. For, for real? The Los Angeles Rams went 2 of 10 on third down. Yeah. You like that? Is that a 7 on the impressive scale? No. Two, 2 of 10? No. You just mentioned that Matt Stafford threw a horrible, inexplicable interception yeah. in that for – about a well, let's just do the whole first half. He was wild high. Yep. Right? Yep. He was off. And furthermore, let's just take this in chronological order. Were not the Rams in huge trouble in the first half about five different times? Were they not in danger of falling woefully behind, like completely behind, like done behind? Mm-hmm. Did, didn't it feel that way to you? So what happened early on, it's nothing to nothing, and Seattle has it fourth and two at the Rams 29. (laughs) And if you can explain this one to me, they try to run the ball right at Aaron Aaron Donald? Donald? No, seriously, you just tried to run it at Aaron Donald? Uh, uh, You tried to run it on third and two and gone nowhere, and then this time you go nowhere fast. You go nowhere backward. If 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 I'm Russell Wilson, I'd have checked out of the play. Oh, now you want to run it. When we should have run it about seven years ago, you wanted to throw a pass. Now, fourth and two, you want to hand it off. What would I have done in that situation? I immediately tweeted about it, although I was so rocked. It took me about five minutes to gather my thoughts because I kept trying to think, did I miss something here? Duh. That's what they came up with. The, the ball has to be <laughs> in Russ's it. hands. Yes. You got to run some RPO, run yes. pass option. You got to let him roll. You, you got to give him a, a choice of I can keep it for three Correct. or four yards or I can toss it for three or four or five yards mm-hmm. to DK, to, to tight end, to, to whatever. Mm-hmm. You, you have to give him a choice. You can't just say, Ah, we're going to trick you. We're going to run it at one of the greatest defensive players in the history of the game. Who, by the way, I got. I've been hard on Aaron Donald before. I think he is having a great year yeah. because this year he's flashing to me. Last night, I've told you there have been long stretches, Cowboy games, yeah. where I've watched and watched, and then I think, where was 99 tonight? I knew where he was last night because yeah. he was everywhere yeah. last night. You got to double him, Skip. If you don't hey, double him, he'll wreck your shot. He, he has become a game wrecker <laughs> yeah. because he's looking even quicker than he mm-hmm. used to look, where, where he's, he's just firing off the ball and knocking people on their backside. Okay, so I, I give you that much. But there, there was also a play, it got to second one at the 15, where Russ throws a touchdown pass mm-hmm. that looked like it was going to put them up 14-3, to three, and Dwayne Brown got called for, for holding on the play. Yeah. I'm not sure we have this play. Yeah, we got it right there. Yeah. There we are. And, and this when, when he makes that pass, I didn't know there was holding, although right. Joe Buck immediately said there's a flag. But but yeah. I thought it's the spin right here. Yeah, he, That's he what caught him. Yeah. He caught him. I, I got it. I don't know that he didn't even have to do it, though. Skip. I, I don't think he had to do it. I don't think it affected the outcome of the play. And all of a sudden, the locket's free in the back of the end zone. Mm-hmm. And and I'm thinking it's 14 to three. And I'm thinking you're cooked. Yeah, because at Seattle with that 12th man crowd, mm-hmm. it would be hard to come back from from that. Right. OK, so then they they 
they turn right around and they get stuck with a 35 yard field goal by Jason Myers. That's a combination horror name, horror movie name, yeah. Jason and Michael Myers. Box. It's perfect for October. <laughs> and what does he do? He's made 39 straight inside the 40. 39 straight field goals inside the 40. You and know who's going to miss it. Look at this. Look at this. That would he be close. missed it from 35 yards. And I'm saying, this is not meant to be. So the Rams are being let off the hook, let off the hook, let off the hook. Yep. And all of a sudden, we go to halftime, and Seattle's only up 7-3, to three, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. I'm not impressed. Then we come out in the third quarter, and what does Stafford do? Once again, for it feels like the <laughs> sixth or seventh time, <laughs> he, he woefully – Underthrows Jack. B. Jack. It, it's so <laughs> underthrown that it's perfect. And he was not trying to back shoulder this or no. underthrow it on purpose. It was just way underthrown. And Deshaun says, Oh, thank you. Because nobody is better at tracking the football than Deshaun. <laughs> hey, he is really good. He'll find it and go get it, yep. wherever it is. And it's hard to do. But uh, that. That Jamal Adams, he yeah. talks a big game, but you got to make that play. Well, right? Skip, he, Jamal is a box safety. Okay, Skip, he's he is, more of a. No, t- I, I got it, but but you, okay, you don't want you, Skip. You don't want Jamal Adams that far down the field. I will honey, buy that. Honey Badger, I will okay, buy fine. that. I can live with that, okay, but not him. But, but still, you you got to find the football right. and at least challenge it. And he, he not only did he slow up and come back and catch it, but then they're both just falling all over themselves, uh-huh. and he he, he ran Can't out of gas. He just completely ran yeah. out of gas, going sideways. Yep. But he, but at least he got it all the way down to what? He got it all like the way 12. down to, yep, there you go. And it was the game breaker. Mm-hmm. It, that, the, a, a terribly underthrown ball. And seriously, I've seen, what, six or seven right. of those to Deshaun? But, he, but to give him credit, Skip, he did hurt his, he did hurt his, okay, uh, I, I got his index finger on his throwing hand. So maybe that has something to do with it. Okay, maybe it did. But now we get to the other injury suffered by the other quarterback of similar caliber, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Okay, so it's it's seven seventeen left in the third, and here's the Aaron Donald throw. And by the way, Aaron Donald saved the, the day on yeah. that one because if he doesn't hit hands with Russ, Russ had to kind of pull the right. string a little bit on it, and, mm-hmm. and he had to release it a little higher than he wanted to. Lockett's gone again. Yep. And he airmailed him because of 99. Yep. 99, stopped, he, he thwarted that play to yep. me, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Russ hits hands. Remember, Russ has never missed a start in 10 years. Right. That, that's how you were talking about durable. Whew. So he, you could see his, and it looked just di- like it was dislocated. Okay, right. right. Didn't it? Yeah, it did. Except yeah. Pete Carroll said afterwards it was like a bad, a severely sprained. I, I don't, that didn't look uh, sprained to no, me. No, they're like it's dislocated. Okay. So Matthew Stafford had a dislocated forefinger mm-hmm. on his throwing hand. Right. This is the middle thing, mm-hmm. finger on your throwing hand. Right. And yet... Russ came back for a series and threw a little swing pass on third down, but Pete Carroll said he just didn't look right. So, right. so I believe it was Pete's decision. Right. You stay over here with me because yeah. they had some back and forth, and right. it looked like Russ is like, but I, I want to go back right. in. I thought this game was on a silver platter for Russell Wilson. W- what does he do best? He's the comeback king right. of the league. Right. I mean, he's he's even beyond Brady in, in fourth quarter comebacks. Yeah. Right. I think you're going to agree with me on this one. I believe Russ has had it with Pete Carroll. I do, too. I believe I Russ is going to get up out of I, it. I, I, well, remember, we went through that in the offseason. He's going to get up they, out of that. They sort of made up. Because I think the thing is, Skip, is that Pete Carroll is setting his ways. We're going to play defense. Yeah. But you can't because the only person there from that Legion of Boom is Bobby, yep. Bobby Wagner. You're trying to play that style. You don't have a beast mode. Now you need to let Russ – be Russ. You're trying to run the football. Okay, you get down in the ball and, game. And okay. by the way, if you had a healthy Chris Carson on the right, fourth and right. two, yes. okay, I got you. Right. But you don't have a healthy Chris Carson. So what, what? what's the point of that? I, I don't know what. And then, Skip, that defense isn't good anymore, Skip. Okay. It, it's, <laughs> it, in fact, it's now on a historic pace. Yes. It's, it's given up 451 yards a game. Right. And with the, the extra game, if it stays on that pace, right. they're going to set the record for yards allowed. And remember, Skip, they were on that pace last year. Yep. They turned it around like the last half of the season and, and, and ended and up winning the Pete division. Carroll's calling card is, is the, defense. Yeah. He's like Belichick. He runs the defense. Right. Right? So, oh, interesting. Yeah, I think Russ has had enough. Russ has had enough with this. Okay. Like, yeah. I, I buy that. But speaking of defense, then your issues, concerns with the Rams. Oh, yeah. They reared their ugly head because Geno comes in and starts looking like Russ. Yes. Right? 
I mean, he's lighting it up. Mm-hmm. That, that might be the best stretch of football Geno Smith I've, I've ever seen him mm-hmm. play until he finally, maybe predictably, he, he although Lockett got Lock, tripped up. Lockett Lock, Lock tripped himself. He's like, what a flag. Did. Flag for what? Because Lock, Lockett tripped his own I, self? I don't know what happened. He just got caught the up. Turf monster got him. I, I guess. But he's not <laughs> one to trip himself up. Right. You know, he's he's got sweet feet. So you gave him a two. I gave him a seven. Um I, I, Matthew Stafford legitimately should have had 500 yards past the last night's game. He missed some easy throws. But Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, oh, with 24 targets, over 200 yards between the two of them, 19 catches, 242 yards. After a while, I wanted to go cover Robert Woods because <laughs> nobody else wanted to. I thought at least I could bother him a little bit. I'd try to jam him at the line. No, Nobody guarded him, right? Skip, what they do a good job of is that they do a good job of dangling cheese in front of you mm-hmm. with either Cooper Cup or Robert Woods and then sneaking the other guy behind him. So the guy that was in front is like, oh, man, he finna throw the ball to Cooper Cup. And here come Robert Woods on the da- on the dagger route, which is that, you know, 10 and 12 yard end cut. Or the same thing, Robert Woods will dance in front of your face, get you looking at him, and here come Cooper Cup in behind him. So they do a good job of giving you window dressing, thinking that this is what you should be looking yep. at, when in actuality, what you should be looking at is right behind you. Mm. So they do a great, a great design. I mean, Cooper Cup, that, that should have been a, a, a what, 70-yard touchdown, the one he slid and, and, and caught on uh, you, Matthew Stafford. Another underthrow. Are you sure Matthew Stafford is that guy? I keep asking that question. I'm not sure. Well. If you'd gotten him in deep trouble last night, I don't think he could pull off a Rusk type. Well, comeback. I think the best thing about it, Skip, is that they got a long week. Yep. So this, hey, this the, the index finger to heal. Yep. And so we'll see how it is. Well, so he ma- said it didn't bother him a bit. Oh, I, I can't tell you. So if you throw it like that and your finger didn't bother you, yeah, yeah, I got probably. Well, I, I'm worried, Skip. If he throw it like that and his uh, finger's although, not bothering him, I think his finger wasn't hurt when he was making the really bad throws. Yeah, in the first, in the first half, no, yeah. no. Yeah. But yeah. in the second half, you know, he bad, He had it taped one way, and then he yeah. came out with it and taped it a different way. Uh, but Skip, their offense. They can do some damage, and that's that's the thing. So they're looking to get in the shootouts. The question is, can you steal a possession without giving the opposing team a possession? Because mm. you can't turn. You get in the playoffs, Skip. That's a game. That's a momentum changing play. Because mm. you're looking to go up three points. You're looking to go up a touchdown, and all of a sudden they pick you off in the end zone. Mm. That's a momentum. That's a debilitating play. I got it. I was not that impressed. Well, you will be when they beat the brakes off your team. Well, let's talk about his team because yeah, according to Fox Bet Sportsbook, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys are a seven-point favorite against the Giants this Sunday on Fox as Dallas looks to extend their NFC East lead. Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley are coming into this one hot after winning their first game of the season, an overtime victory at New Orleans. So, Shannon, you were impressed by New York last week. Yeah. So how much of a shot do you give them this Sunday at Jerry World? Well, anything is probably on any given Sunday, any given day, one game, the Giants could absolutely beat them. But I'm not betting my Fox bet money on it. You're not? I'm sure not. I'm sure After not. After a whole – I had to sit across from you the whole week hearing about Danny Dimes and mm-hmm. Saquon's back. You, you trust that? Holiday. Oh, you, you trust that? You're I, not- I'm talking about you. No, no. I'm not in the Hall of Fame. You are, and you've been talking <laughs> up the Giants all week. Exactly. I'm in the Hall of Fame, but I'm in the Hall of Fame for not picking, making bad picks. Oh. That's what I'm about to go into the Betters Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get my due back. Yo, you over there. Oh, you over there. I got 50 cases. I got a swimming pool. I, I, got, I got two three. swimming pools. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you laughing right now, but I'm going to get it all back. I'm going to get it all back. Skip, here's the thing. Daniel Jones has had 30 career starts, and only seven of those starts has he not turned the football over. Now, the Cowboys do what? Do, the Cowboys might not do a whole lot well, but they take the ball away extremely well from a guy that all he does is turn the ball over extremely well. Mm-hmm. Skip, the Giants beat the Saints. Now, we thought the Saints might be something special because of that opening day win demolition that they put on the Green Bay Packers. But the Washington, but we realized the Giants lost to Washington and Atlanta, two bad teams. Barely. Yeah, they could skip. We, we, do we, so, we, we, so what do we think about Atlanta? i tell you what, I could, give me two cases. I'm going to take the Jets over Atlanta on Sunday in London. The Jets yeah, I take the Jets over Atlanta. That's how bad Atlanta is, mm. and they could, and the Giants couldn't beat them. Mm. So for me, look, I expect the Cowboys to be able to move the ball. They're going to run the football. The question is, I look, and all this division, this division rivalry, stop that. I know what you're going to try to do. See, what you're going to try to do is play it up because this is a division game, and my Cowboys going to be tough. And when they win, we beat a division opponent. Mm. No, you're not. Mm. You're going to blow them out. Mm. So. 
I'm not falling for the banana. No, nope, I don't want to bet. Don't offer me no points because the answer is no. I know what you're going to try to do. You're going to try to coach me and say, well, I'll give you the seven points. Since, you know, you complain and I'm going to give you the seven. I don't want no stinking points. What's your score? <laughs> uh, I think it was 31-17. 31-17 home team? Yep. Dallas Cowboys? Yep. Shannon Sharp just picked the Dallas Cowboys in a blowout because Shannon Sharp has actually seen no, the no, light. No, he don't see no light. I, I saw, I've been seeing the light for the last month. Mm-hmm. I saw the Giants light, mm-hmm. and it's very dim. <laughs> <laughs> That's the light I saw. <laughs> All week long, I have not been trying to play up the Giants. I've only been trying to set you up, <laughs> not play them up, set you up. Uh, because no. I was waiting until this moment because I hoped – you would be fooled, as in fool's gold, <laughs> by Danny Dunn. Uh-huh. I was hoping that you would stand by your guns, but it was just a bunch of hocus pocus from you all week about, mm-hmm. oh, here the Giants are coming for you guys. They're coming, yeah. Right? Well, are they or are they not? No. Because you think not. Maybe next time around. Okay. I was hoping that you would take the cheese. I was hoping that you would say, yeah, I'll take the seven points, which is what it is right now on right. Fox Bet. I was hoping that you would fall for once again, another sucker bet because my Cowboys are better than the Giants. And I have believed all week, we got this. You know me. I don't like to jinx things. I don't like to be this arrogant. Oh, yo, oh yes, game, you do. This supremely confident. Oh, really? But I am supremely confident that my Cowboys will win this game 34 to 20. That's what I think. Okay. So because we both got I, 14. You got a little okay. bit more than I got. I think Daniel Jones is a talented, still young player, and I think he will make some plays with his arm and his legs. He's he's gifted. He can really run. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely more athletic yeah. than people probably okay. thought he was going to be coming out. And I saw a couple of flashes of Saquon, of the old Saquon. He's not quite as quick or explosive as he used to be, but he's getting there because he's gaining confidence by the stride mm-hmm. on his repaired knee. Yep. So I believe he'll make a few plays. They paid Galladay a whole bunch of money to make plays, and he's going to make some plays. But I do think that you are correct about my defense. They are contagiously forcing turnovers. Mm -hmm. They're taking the ball away. They have the second most to Buffalo. They're tied for first in turnover differential because they're not turning the ball over and they're taking it away. Mm -hmm. That is the magic formula. That's the recipe for success. It it is the recipe. And I believe in this team, and I'm going to quote the great Troy Aikman once again, because on his radio gig in Dallas, I believe it was yesterday. Damn, dude, everybody got a gig in the Yeah, everybody does. (laughs) But but Troy's the one who actually deserves a gig, (laughs) as opposed to some of the other spokesman for the Dallas oh, Cowboys oh, so Steven, sitting up in the luxury Are you saying Steven is Jerry on the thrones it. up in the box? Yeah. Okay, so Troy said about the defense, I think it's got a lot of new youthful type mm-hmm. energy, and Dan Quinn's got them playing with a lot of confidence, and that's a big part of this league. It is. It is. They, it, they look it's night, everything. night and day from last year. They walk on the field, and I just like their body mm-hmm. language, like, oh, we, we can do this. You saw Micah coming before I did. He's been a godsend. Mm-hmm. I still love Patrick Sertan. He's going to make 10 straight, 12 straight Pro Bowls. He's been a godsend for your Denver Broncos. Mm-hmm. But he ain't Micah in overall impact. No. The whole defense is starting to feed off Micah's versatility. Right. He's, he's he just wherever the football is, he gets there. Right. Number 11, I just look where number 11's lined up. Is he a linebacker, sort of a monster position like Charles Haley played in Mm -hmm. in San Francisco early in his career? Or does he put his hand in the dirt or does he just stand up in the middle of the line and rush? They're using him everywhere, and I think they are haunting and tormenting offenses with this. And then Troy said that because the Cowboys' offense is so explosive, there's a lot of pressure for opposing offenses to feel they've got to do too much too soon. They have to do something every time they have the football right. or they're going to find themselves two scores down. Well, that, well, isn't that what happens when you play the Bucs? Yeah. Because of the offense. That's what you yep. happen when you play Patrick Mahomes. Yep. His offense is so dynamic. Now we got, we got to match him. We got to take unnecessary risk. And the next thing you know, the difference between those – the Cowboys are getting turned up. The ball gets popped up in there. It's not hitting the ground without one of the, somebody with a star in their head, his head helmet sliding up under. Yep. If the ball's on the ground, somebody's going to jump on it for the Cowboys. Okay. So that's where they are. They're there in a feeding frenzy with this turnover. And that's what happens, Skip. Normally, you have a, they, they come in bunches. 
you get a, a four or five, six game stretch where you get in one, two turnovers a game. Then you might have a, a low with two or three games. You don't get any. And then it picks right back up right now. They're in that sweet spot that if the ball goes up and if it you better hope your guy catch it, because if he doesn't, somebody with a star in his helmet is going to slide up under. And a lot of times that has been one Trevon Dick. Yes. Who was the defensive player of the month in right. September. And then he's the defensive player of the week as we head into October. Yep. And he's obviously a receiver sort of disguised or camouflaged as a cornerback right. because his brother obviously is a great receiver and mm-hmm. he's got receiver skills. Oh, yeah. But he is traveling with the best receiver. It was DJ Moore last week. At some point, will they start saying we can't go there? But he'll have Galladay. He'll just go where Galladay goes. Right. And does that mean they won't throw it to Galladay? I think they'll still keep right. trying to. Well, you, you got to, Skip, because now if you do that, you can roll coverage and protect everybody else's. So you got to take your chances. I'm not saying. But he knows. The thing is that, that if you watch this kid, watch what he the way he plays it. He knows we're coming with a blitz. This third and two. Ain't nobody running no go route on third and two more times than not. They're just trying to go to the sticks. Yep. So he plays the sticks. Yep. He jumps the route. He's tremendous at that. So early on, you better double move this kid to get him out, to get him thinking that I'll go deep on you because if you don't, yep. he's going to be in your back pocket all day. Last line from Troy Aikman on his radio gig in Dallas. If you're a casual NFL fan, I don't know that you truly appreciate how physical Zeke is running the football. Mm-hmm. It's BB Zeke as in bounce back Zeke. Mm-hmm. He still has the best body lean of any running right. back in football. He is extremely physical to the point when they start to hammer him, he just wears you down and right. out mm-hmm. because he is high contact, which means he's not going to have a lengthy career in Dallas, but he's having a resurgence in year six that you did not see coming. I did not see it coming. I didn't see it coming because I didn't know, th- I didn't think they were going to give him the touches. He would have to split touches with. With a Pollard, Pollard, and this is a running team. You got CD, you got Amari, you got Gallup. And so, Skip, I just didn't see the touches. If you remember last year, Skip, a lot of times he was getting hit in the backfield before he could get started. Agreed. Now he, the holes are so big, he's five yards before someone's laying a hand on him. Zach Martin, first team, pro football focus. Ty Smith is back to being Ty yep. Smith. Mm-hmm. Still, although he's not a household name and he's filling subbing in for Lyle Collins, you hadn't heard his name. Terrence and as long Steele. as the offensive lineman, you don't hear his name, he's doing good. I agree. <laughs> Locke Collins is, is going to be back, right. I think, in a couple of games. I don't know if he might go get that job uh, back, though, Skip. Uh, you, you said you don't like, you don't, hey, you say with things going good, you don't like to mess the upset the apple cart now. But how about him as a backup lineman? <laughs> Swing tackle, if you will, right? <laughs> so, my favorite stat, I'm going to repeat one more time. With Dak Prescott at quarterback, the Dallas Cowboys are 27 and 0, 27 and 0 when they run it more than they pass it. I think they've flipped the script back to more of a running team. They're going to run to pass. They're going 2016 to 18 Cowboys. Okay. Yes. We're last year early, and if we go to 2019, they threw it to run. I right. mean, they, they were just, you, you said, they're just pass happy. They're mm-hmm. pass crazy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now they've gone back to meat and potatoes and they will grind you down and wear you out. And when Dak throws, it's high percentage. It's low risk, high reward, mm-hmm. because he does have three. We don't have Gallup back quite yet, but he's got two big-time receivers mm-hmm. and two really good tight end targets. Right. So all of a sudden, he hurts you. Every time he play fakes and drops back right. to throw, somebody's going to be way open. Well, I think the thing is, Skip, is that they got back to – Although this style is not as entertaining as throwing the ball 50 times a game, yep. this style is more conducive for winning, winning. than throwing the ball 50 yeah. times a game. Maybe Jerry has finally sat back and said, you know, maybe we should try to win. Well, how about Jerry? if Jerry just sit back? Mm-hmm. That would be the best. That's the best recipe for winning. Jerry just sitting back. Let the coaches that he hired to do their job yep. do their job. Okay. And last week? Faithfully, he got rid of one of his sons, Jalen Smith. He just said, okay, we don't need him anymore. I will cut time. Yeah, something, something not adding up. It's going to come out. Maybe maybe, maybe maybe, it was going to be some problems. He's not playing. I need more playing time. I'm playing well. Maybe. Something that, that, I mean, for Jalen, all of a sudden, Skip, you five games into the season and you release a guy? For what? Who, who actually was having a resurgence right. this year. Right. Not great, but, but right. better. Way better than last year. Yeah. I, I was shocked, and I was shocked that Jerry co-signed on it because I'm sure the coaches said, hey, we just got to move on because yeah. Keanu Neal's coming off the COVID list. They're deep at that position. They'd be very deep, yep. Starting with Mike. Yep. No mercy. USA Today released their list of the greatest NBA players of all time, and Skip's guy Michael Jordan came up with the number one spot. 
To no one's surprise, LeBron then came in at number two, followed by Kareem, Magic, and Wilt. Shannon? We know you have at least one problem with this list. The floor is yours. Well, I like the fact that, that you know, the 10, and that would be probably my 10. Um, I like the order. I don't know how you have a Mount Rushmore if the top three guys. That would be my Mount Rushmore, actually. And I think we've gone over this, Skip. I had Magic, I had Kareem, I had LeBron, and I had Jordan. So I don't have a problem. I just have a problem with number one. And you know I got a problem with number one because I believe LeBron James is the best all-around basketball player that we've ever seen. He's so much more than a score, even though he has a higher scoring average than Kobe, Iverson, and James Harden, who is known as scores. He's right there with Kevin KD. They average the same per game. Even though Kevin Durant is the greatest scorer, no, we've never seen anything like it. Little old Bron, can't score at all. Mm. Had the same score and average as Kevin Durant. Poor little old Bron. Yeah, level little old Bron. <laughs> 19. Well, he ain't getting no votes for MVP. One guy couldn't even make it to 19. He was on fumes in year 14 and 15. You mm. saw it. You saw what he looked like with the Wizards. Mm-hmm. Let's not pretend. I don't want to hear nothing about no ceremony. Because that wasn't ceremonial. Mm-hmm. Because if he had won a title, you would have been, everybody would have been, oh, did you see Jordan win a title with the Wizards? Well, he wasn't going to. Yeah, exactly. Well, why not? He'd go. Been off for three years. The goal. In his late 30s. It did go. Three years to go. off. Think about it. It was fresh. My guy ain't take no time off. Mm-hmm. Your guy took a year and a half off, too, and came back. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to talk about that. Your guy got five months off before the bubble. Don't do that. Way to Don't go. do that. Look, Congratulations. bubble issue. This notion. Remember how I walked you through it step by step? Mm-hmm. I thought I was in court. Step by step. Exhibit A, exhibit, exhibit B, C, about the clutchness of one LeBron James and how he's more clutch. That's what the numbers say. He mm-hmm. hit more game-winning shots than a lot of people. That's I ain't not talk. what the numbers say. That, that's what the numbers say. That's they say, numbers say he's missed far more than anybody over his span in this league. But Go ahead. Ain't very many guys that's been clutch, what we would consider clutch, Skip, mm. t- played as long as he did. But anyway, mm. 17-time All-NBA, 13-time first-team NBA record, four MVPs. You and I both know we should have more. Mm-hmm. Four final MVPs, second only to Michael. Six-time All-Defense, led the league in scoring and assists. And, Skip, you and I both know. The Warriors did everything. They, they begged. They kissed the man's feet. Bought his mom a jet to get him to come to Golden State mm-hmm. because they knew it was over. Mm-hmm. He went What he did from 3-1 down to beat Golden State, they had to. They begged Kevin Durant. I want KD, write that book. And I want you to tell verbatim mm-hmm. what Steph, Clay, and Draymond told you to get you to come to Golden State. And then what happened? It, he won. He won. No question. Who was the MVP of the next two finals? Kevin Durant. Thank you. The NBA, Best player on the planet. Go. They, they say the uh, 18, the 8, 17, and 18 Warriors is the greatest championship team assembled. That's what they say. Now, Skip, if it's a lie, they told it. Mm. All I'm just doing is give you the fact. But for me, my Mount Rushmore is what they have. That's the top four players. But I would put LeBron at number one. I put Jordan at two. Mm. You should be celebrating about this list. Celebrate it for what? I've been told you how it was going to be all alone. You should go to, what's your favorite place? Maestro's? Maestro's. 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 Yeah, Beverly Hills, yeah. right? You, you should go tonight and have you a big old juicy steak. I might go get that Wagyu that ain't fine. Oh, but you're doing takeout, right? Yeah. Okay, well, you should do that. In fact, I, I'll buy it for you tonight <laughs> because you deserve it because this should be cause for a week-long celebration. But what? We're that, not number one. We should be. That USA Today actually put LeBron James number two on the all-time list? You're <laughs> kidding. What? What are you talking about? Th- this is nothing but a politically correct Oh, not choice. politically correct. It, it's, it's because they don't want to burn the bridge to LeBron and his inner circle, who are all very powerful but, in the field of sports. But hold on, Skip. Sports Illustrated didn't do that with Jordan. Mm. Remember, they put him on the cover and said it was a joke. He was a joke. Mm. And he, so everybody, see, so I love how when somebody gives LeBron kudos, it's political. It's something motivating it. But when they get Jordan, ah, oh, man, you know, that they, they got that right. That's spot on. Mm. LeBron wants everybody to be his friend. Jordan wanted nobody to be his friend. He did not care. The biggest difference between Michael Jordan and LeBron James is that Michael Jordan was the coldest blooded killer. Of the ball I think I'm speaking right oh, my now. Bad, my bad. Coldest blooded killer we've ever oh, seen God, in any kid. sport. Just give him the ball and get out of his way. You said that was Tom played. Brady yesterday. Okay. Well, I'm in clutchness. No, you said the cold blooded killer was Tom Brady. Well, he just did it more times. But I'm just saying. 
in the basketball realm. I have never seen anything like the force of nature that was Michael Jordan. And you know it, and I know it. Yeah, Skip, I, I've already told you that. Okay, LeBron James is disqualified from oh, the second spot on this list because he is a shockingly lousy three-point shooter for his status as the second-best player. He's better than Michael. Okay, they didn't even shoot the three. He's better days. than Kobe. Okay, didn't, didn't care about the three. <laughs> okay, and LeBron James is simply the worst superstar free throw shooter I've ever seen of, of a player of this magnitude. And he is the unclutchest late game free throw shooter in the history of basketball, given his magnitude. Disqualified, disqualified, disqualified. So how is Wilt of the free throw Sorry, shooter? I don't care about Wilt. I only care about those two. There's no way LeBron belongs that high on this list. In fact, my list, which we have done here lately on the show, and I'm open for this to change depending on if LeBron can win a championship with he don't Russell need to do Westbrook. He don't need to do anything else. No. He's already locked in at that spot, so, but I got him higher. Here are my top. I'll just go to where I have LeBron. I've got Michael, obviously, number one. I've got Magic Johnson, number two, because you want to talk about cold-blooded killer. He also was. When it was winning time, he won. When it's winning time for LeBron, he often runs from the ball, as he did in game two in the bubble of the conference finals against Denver when the play was called for him. And Rondo said, I locked eyes with LeBron, and he did not move. That's LeBron. That's the difference between LeBron and Magic. Shaquille O'Neal was the the most dominating f- offensive force I've ever seen. Couldn't shoot free throws. Okay. Well, it didn't matter because he was seven feet, one inch tall, and he just destroyed this league for three great years. And if you want to do body of work, you got me. But he's third on my list because I've never seen a force like Shaq. Wasn't pretty to watch, but it was dominating. Kareem, you, you've got him on your Mount Rushmore. Yeah. I've got him fourth. Tim Duncan, what did Tim do? He won five rings that should have been six, except Ray Allen took LeBron off the hook for missing the late shot against my Spurs in game six of 2013 finals. And if not for that Ray Allen shot, Tim Duncan has six rings a la Michael Jordan. Okay. Okay. So then I go to Bill Russell. I'll, I'll just take him over LeBron, just in body of work. I, you, you what body? What winner? work? Okay. Well, he just won and won. And okay. Won you and say won. he's a greater winner, but he wasn't a better okay. player. Kobe was the closest thing to Jordan I have ever seen. Wasn't a better player? Yeah. He wasn't a better than Michael, but he was a better player than LeBron. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. He just was. And by the way, in what way? Y- your man, Larry Bird, he was your childhood idol, yes. hero, right? Yes. Better than LeBron. I'll take him any day over LeBron because he's a better shooter. He's a much better free throw shooter. He's equally good as a passer, and he just made plays that had to get made. He was a leader, a winner, and again, he did. He didn't okay. win more than Bron. No, he didn't. He won. He didn't win more rings, MVPs but, but, than Bronze. But he had to deal with that guy Magic on the left coast. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Magic wasn't in his. Mm-hmm. Magic wasn't in his conference. Mm-hmm. No, talk about your goat. Mm-hmm. He had to deal with your goat. Why didn't your goat? You know, he had to deal with Ma- before he got a chance to see Magic. He had to do something in the East. Now, if you don't mind me asking, where is the Chicago Bulls? Do they play in the Eastern Conference or the Western Conference? Yep. So therefore, Magic Larry should not even have that many opportunities to get to the final. If your goat, if he is what you said he is, mm-hmm. he's got to stop Larry Bird and Magic Johnson from meeting in all these finals. Why didn't that happen? After he scored 63 in game one of the finals, oh what did Larry Bird call him? That's God disguised Skip. as Michael Skip. Jordan. He called him God. Skip, think about it. See, this when is, he was a baby player coming off a broken Skip. leg. Think about it. When I say when you say LeBron is a terrible three point shooter, I said he shot better than 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 Michael from the three. Well, Michael didn't put an emphasis on it. I said, well, he shot better than Kobe. Well, Kobe didn't care. Well, this guy, well, he's a terrible three point, a uh, terrible free throw shooter. I said, Will Russell, Kobe, uh, and uh, uh, Duncan and Shaq were terrible. Well, that's different. Okay, but they're seven feet tall. What they got to do with it? Well, so was Kareem. I mean, LeBron, so was y'all mean. LeBron's a point guard. You can't shoot it that poorly. So was, point guard. Well, Magic was as tall as LeBron. Magic made 85% of his he free did. throws. But I believe LeBron is a better player than Magic. Okay. How? That's blasphemy. I'm afraid we're going to get struck. How? By did you watch Magic yeah. Johnson take Man, over stop those it. Scenes? You know good well I ma- watch Magic. <sighs> Lord have mercy. Watched him from 79 on. Yep. Okay. So I was there in 79 at the NCAA Finals in Salt, Salt Lake, Lake City. City. Yeah. I was there in courtside watching Magic versus Bird. It changed college Skip, basketball. I look, the top, the top four ain't to be played with. The mm. only difference I would, I would switch one and two. That's all, Skip. Mm. You make, Skip, to see the problem that I got with you is that you make it seem like they're, they're, they're saying some guy that got 
you know, one MVP going to one finals is a two, uh, is a five time All Star and a two time All NBA player. Do you understand what Jahar accomplished? Like LeBron is seventeen straight starts in the All Star game. Mm-hmm. 13-time first-team All-NBA. 13. Mm. That is a record. Mm. Six finals with six MVPs? How are you going to argue against that? Skip. Ten scoring titles because, to one scoring because title? Because I'm not going to let you not count the six straight years that LeBron, that Michael Jordan went out in the first, second, or the third rounds. I'm not going to let you do that. Because what you're doing and what others like you have done, you put emphasis on, well, he didn't lose the finals. Well, he lost in the first round, so he can't lose the finals. He lost in the second round. He can't lose. It's almost like you give him credit for not getting to the finals and losing as opposed to deducting for him for going out the first round. Mm. Michael, basketball killer. Magic, killer. Larry Bird, killer. LeBron, not a killer. Nice guy. Really good guy. If the results are the same, why do you care? Mm-hmm. Why do you care? I, I've just seen LeBron run from the free throw line because he can't make those late game free throws. I, I, ain't, seen disqualified. I ain't seen it. I ain't seen I, it. I, I've seen it again I haven't and again seen it yet. All I know is that my guy's still going. 23 in 19 years. Mm-hmm. Still, even though I, di- I might disagree with a lot of things they say, they still say he's a top three player. Name the time in NBA history that I got a superstar, historically great player. I'm not talking about uh, Robert Parrish played all those years. I'm not talking about Kevin, uh, uh, Kevin Will. Kev, I know Kev very well. Played all those years. Vince Carter. I'm talking about a historically great player that's been top three in year 19. Mm. As a matter of fact, with Jordan, t- in his last two years in the Washington, was he top three? Heck no, he'd taken three years off because his <laughs> that, 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 got that, run out. That's of not LeBron's fault. Yeah, he came back at 39 and 40. Uh, that's on his resume. Yep. But let me ask you a question. He comes back at 39 and 40, he wins a title. Mm-hmm. You give him credit for that, but yeah. y'all won't give him credit. Y'all he won't didn't. give him the There was no way he was going well, to well, do that. Well, why not? He the GOAT! No, well, he's, he'd already established that. No, no, he the GOAT! No, nobody but you thinks LeBron is the GOAT. No, it's, it's just ridiculous. I, 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 a lot of people think he's the GOAT. You, you know what? I ran into the great Spike Lee at the Peninsula Hotel here in Los Angeles two Fridays ago, and he came over. He, he wanted to come over and say hi to me just so he could say, what is Shannon thinking about LeBron over Michael? Man, and obviously t- Spike made commercials. Yeah, tell Michael's Spike. Work. Yeah, Spike. Okay. Spike no, I, don't, I take everything with Spike. Say I, I deduct everything that he said because of that. Just because of that. Yeah. Because it's got to be the. You've got to be the shoes, Mars buddy. Black. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Got to be the shoes. I got it. But but Spike really really knows basketball. Yeah. And he's just like. What is Shannon Despite thinking? Despite no no basketball, he he's still know. rooting for the Knicks. He so, thinks the Knicks got a chance. And he told me, the orange and blue. He said, baby, you better watch the orange and blue next year. Did you? Did he's he, just a diehard. Did he not see what he I He knows trained? basketball did, at the highest level. Look at my guy. I mean, uh, he knows what that 20. I'm just there, to, there's one 23, and it's that guy. No, no, no. You're this right. This guy tried to we steal six. it. He we tried six. to co-opt it. We, he even tried to co-opt the powder toss before the games. It was embarrassing. What we did, Skip, is we expanded on it. You know, Edison and the light bulb. Mm. Edison admitted that. But now they got the LED. We improved upon it. Oh, That's also, he improved upon the 23. That's really? all he did. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah, it's shameful that he won that. <laughs> no, ain't yeah. no shameful. And then he got tattooed chosen one on his That's what he is. Back. That's what he is. Picked him out. Is he? You the one. How does the chosen one miss so many free throws? Hey. I just don't know. God. How did he never improve upon that? You know, that? God had a busy schedule that day. Did he? But he said, glow. I'm going to give you something special. Really? No. Oh, but he won't be able to shoot free throws. He's got some flaws. <laughs> he, yeah, he shoot free throws. Uh-huh. He's like, we not done. Uh-huh. You do realize we're not done. You, you realize for the last five years he shot under 70% from the free throw line? You've watched, I mean, you, you've lost like 10 cases of due betting on his free throws. Go bet this year, too. Yeah. Are you? Yep. What do you got? I don't know. We 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 we'll come with something. Okay. But all I'm saying is that I mean it's I mean how many like six of the Lakers in the top ten all time by USA Today, don the purple and go. Mm. And we got we got four. Of the, they got three of the top four mm. Lakers. Mm. Okay. But I'll I'll, I'll I give got, you that. I got what. what? No, you ain't going to give me that because you say LeBron shouldn't even be up there. You no. got LeBron top t- You got LeBron 10. No, I, I get that they're all Lakers. Yeah. You, you got that going. You got tradition. But LeBron doesn't belong at two on this list. He belongs at nine on this list. You're right. You know what, Skip? Baylor? You know what, Skip? You're right. He doesn't belong at two. Mm-hmm. He belongs higher. Yeah. 
And by the way, they have Kevin Durant at 13 on the season. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. He is on the rise. He is on the rise. And if he does what I think he'll do this year, he's going to win a regular season MVP and finals MVP, maybe over LeBron. We'll see how that unfolds. I'm not sure because the Lakers are still going to have to deal with the Clippers in the West. But the point is that if he does that, all of a sudden, he's got three of these finals MVPs. He's going to start rising and whoa, challenging whoa, whoa, whoa. LeBron. How many position. we got? Yeah. How many we got? How many regular season MVPs we got? Mm. How many first team All NBAs we got? How many t- consecutive All Star game starts? Nobody. See, we got stuff. Can't nobody say. Mm. What if KD winds up with three MVPs against LeBron in the finals? Whew. What? What? That's still at three ain't more than four. No mercy. 18 former NBA players, including Tony Allen, Glenn Davis, and Sebastian Telfair, were charged in a scheme where they allegedly attempted to receive about $4 million in fraudulent medical claims. Authorities say the conspiracy goes all the way back to 2017, and they have various records showing the ex-players were sometimes far from the medical and dental offices when they were reportedly getting treatment. So, Shannon, what's your reaction to this? Sad, disappointed, hurt. Because it, make it, it makes it more difficult for the men that actually need these services to get them. Yep. Now, all of their claims becomes gets even more scrutinized. Yep. It gets delayed even further when they actually need this. Skip, I, I, and it had a very similar situation happen in the NFL. And I had one of the guys on my show, Clinton Portis, and talked about it. And uh, he's waiting to get sentenced um, now. But Skip, it's just uh, this is what we know in our society. Anytime money is involved, someone's going to find a, try to find a way to beat the system. Yep. That's just the way some people are wired. Mm-hmm. I'm not wired like that, but I, 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 and I, it, 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 it irks me that people really needed to see a chiropractor, really needed to see a dentist, or really needed to see some health care provider. And some jack leg thought it'd be a good idea when I don't really need it. But if there's an opportunity for me to beat the system, to skirt the system, let's try and do that. Mm-hmm. While many people now, Skip, now it's going to be delayed when someone really need these services. It's going to be delayed even further. And that's what I told Porter on my show. I said, you do realize by doing this, you make it harder for the men that actually needed this service to get it now. Yep. Do you understand how many people they turned down because they thought they, the, the claim was faulty? And you're out there doing faulty claims and y'all collecting. Mm-hmm. It, make, it, it, it infuriates me, Skip. And I get it. Everybody didn't make tons and tons of money. And some people made a bad investment and some people got a divorce or whatever the case may be. Everybody's case is different. I was very fortunate. I got with my, my, uh, um, my guy, been with Marvin Dillmar for 25 years now. And he asked me the very first time I met him, he says, well, what do you see yourself in 10, 15 years? I said, I want the same standard of living that I have right now. He says, well, this is what you need to do. Bring me all of your bills. I want to know what you pay, how much you pay, and where the money's going. Brought him everything. He says, is this what we need to do? He says, Shannon, you can only spend $39 a year. I spent $38.50. I'm just saying, not, yeah. not that, but I'm just saying, Skip, yeah. whatever he told me I could spend, right. that's what I, I went under that. I never went over that. Mm-hmm. Marvin, I really need this. I need... Why do I need three houses? Why do I need 10 cars? Why do I need to get mama a house that I'm going to have to pay somebody to upkeep it? Get mama a house, get granny a house that they can provide. Skip, I hate this because now these men, there are men, seriously, Skip, that actually need to see a chiropractor, need to see a doctor or dentist. And now it's going to be delayed because some jackasses got greedy, made a lot of money, but got greedy. It's like, man, you know what? We can beat the system. And beating the system you hurt the fellow man who could really could really use these benefits. Mm. I, 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 it just makes me upset. It really does. I appreciate that. I hear that. And yet, do you realize these jackasses, 18 defendants, split a grand total of 2.5 million? So it wasn't like I, I expected it to be they they 20, 30, 50 million. I thought it was going to be significant. This is the equivalent of chump change unless you don't have chump change, right? But here's the thing, Skip. If you can go steal it, it's just like somebody robbing a liquor store. You got $42. Yeah. What the hell have you gotten with $42? <laughs> it was a mere fact, Skip. I really didn't have to do anything. I let somebody, I go to a doctor, I let him sign this, Skip. You say $2 million, but if I get 50000 and I ain't have to do anything but lie, yeah. I take it. I wouldn't take it, but I'm saying that's their thought process. Mm. I wouldn't do it. 
One of these ex-players was playing basketball in Taiwan when he was supposedly getting $48,000 worth of root canals and crowns on eight teeth at a Beverly Hills dental office in December of 2018. Can't even lie straight. Okay. Now let me personalize it. My wife, Ernestine, was distraught all day yesterday because she loves two players from the past. Mm -hmm. She loves Tony Allen and she loves Big Baby Davis. Mm -hmm especially Tony Allen. He just became her favorite because he played so hard on defense. He just disrupted. And remember, the late, great Kobe Bryant always says, Tony Allen right. was my toughest to, to try to figure out. He, he just played me tougher than anybody played mm -hmm. me. I loved Tony Allen when he was an Oklahoma State Cowboy, winning Big 12 Player of the Year and Big 12 Tournament Player of, of, the, of that tournament mm -hmm. back in, what was it, oh. Four. Mm -hmm. Then he went late first round to the Celtics, and he made six first-team all-defenses. It's pretty great. Right. He made $41 million. She kept asking me yesterday, didn't he make a lot of money? And I had to look it up. Yeah, he made a grand total of $41 million. Right. And she said, where did it go? I don't know. He, he didn't have Marvin Dimoff making a budget, I guess. And his right. wife is also indicted and right. charged. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't explain it. I, I got to know Tony Allen on the other show at ESPN. One year we were at the finals. We had him on in Oklahoma City. It was LeBron's breakthrough year, right. 2012. Mm -hmm. And loved him. Enjoyed him. Around him a lot for several days in a row. I, I can't even fathom. But when it comes to these things, as you know, you, you can't fathom. You can't no. predict it. You don't know what an a individual's individual, uh, what his finances are, right. or how dire the straits right. are. Skip, it's like, let me, let me, Skip, you've seen this with athletes. Yep. A lot of time athletes, once they retire, they gain weight because you keep the same eating habits without mm -hmm. the same workout schedule. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with how athletes become broke. You keep the same spending habits when you don't yeah. have the income coming in. Mm -hmm. That's how you end up broke if you make a 40 million, if you make 60 million, 100 million. You have the same habits, but you don't curtail it once yep. you retire. Well, Hell, Skip, I couldn't, you know, I used to take my family to Vegas. We go to Vegas and we kick it. And, yeah. Well, hell, I ain't in the NFL now. We can't be going to Vegas. No, nope, you can't do it. Okay. I, I, Skip, I just keep it real. My, and my family understood that. We talk, My mom talked about, oh, I remember we used to go to Vegas. Yeah, mama, but baby ain't got it like that no more. Mm. You can go. I'm going to send her for her 80th birthday. She said, that's what I want for my 80th birthday, baby. I want to go to Vegas. Have at it, mama. The Memphis Grizzlies announced uh, just a week ago they were going to retire Tony Allen's number January 28th. I'm, I'm guessing that's off now. Probably right? so. And we've had Big Baby on the show before, and he's had other, obviously, legal issues, but he was so lovable as a player back to his LSU days, grew up in Baton Rouge, and then I don't know what happens. I don't know. It's, it's scary. Maybe I'm the only one think like this, but I, I'm, I, I don't think I am. Skip, I, I, the reason why I, I don't really like to partake in anything like this, because I understand how others will be judged that look like me. Yeah. So for me, I can't make it harder on someone that's coming after me. So that's why I just, you know, hey, I stay in my lane. I do what I do. But for this, now somebody really needs this. Now their, their, their claim is going to get gone over with a fine tooth comb. Yep. They really need it. Damn. Okay, uh, have you, we were still in the process of processing, Mr. Such and Such. We're still in the process. We're still in the process. Where these claims, whoop, whoop, went right through. Not everything gets gone over with a fine tooth comb. Man, I, I hate this. I hate it that, that guys do stuff like this. Bro, get, get, get I get a job. I get it. Get I, 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 I get, Skip, you're a professional athlete, and the first thing somebody go like, man, what you doing here? Working. That's what I'm doing here. I'm working. I ain't got it like that no more. So I got to work. Mm -hmm. It's simple. You're not above working. I get it. Your pride. Man, that joker made 50 million. He made 100 million. And he got to do this or not. Like, yep, sure do. Sure do. Yep. Okay, but I don't think Shannon Sharp made 41 million. Hell no. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I, it's not how much you make. It's how much you keep. My grandpa used to always tell me that all the time, boy. It ain't how much you make. It's how much you keep. Skip it. When, when I first got to the league, the, 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 the insurance policy in the NFL wasn't like it is now. Mm -hmm. So I would go every Tuesday. I went and signed the dentist chair. 
They were only paying 10 percent, end up getting like sixty thousand dollars worth of work done over two years. Now, mind you, my first year, I only made sixty three thousand. Mm. My second year, I made seventy three thousand. So damn near twenty five percent of my money went in my mouth. Mm hmm. But I've always said, man, if I ever come into some money, I always told all my friends, they'll tell you, I'm going to get my mouth fixed. I'm, I'm going to have me some pearly whites. Mm. Got them. Got them. Man, I, I, it's, I just get frustrated when people do this. I, I, it, 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 I, just, I just can't. I, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. I, I'm, I'm not built that way. Mm. Man, my grandmother rolling her grades. You know, but baby, why you do that? Mm. I raised you better than that. You did, Granny. You ain't never got to worry about your baby doing something like that. That's for damn sure. No mercy. Don't miss your chance to win $100,000 of Terry Bradshaw's money on the Fox Bet Super 6 app, where players have won over $5 million already. Scan the QR code on the screen, download the app, and pick the outcome of six Sunday NFL games for your shot to win Terry's money. It's completely free to play. Now, the Browns are preparing to play the Chargers this weekend, and according to a report, Baker Mayfield has been playing through a torn labrum on his non-throwing shoulder that he suffered three weeks ago. No surgery is required, and he hasn't missed a practice, but the quarterback had already admitted he didn't play up to his own standards last week. So, Shannon, how much do you think that injury contributed to his poor play last week? The one thing my, my good friend and my partner of five years have told me in his 40 years of covering football that when a player's out there on the field, he's on the court, he's on the diamond, he's healthy. Mm. That's what he told me. Yep. And those are the words I live by. So every time <laughs> I come. <laughs> right. So I don't want to hear that skill, baby. The truth is the Hall of Famer across from me <laughs> taught me that. I thought it was Odell fault. You told me it was Odell. The reason why Baker was struggling mm -hmm. was because of Odell. So he's got double jeopardy now. Oh, so you are going to give him that excuse. Mm -hmm. So let me see. Throw his shoulder. He right-handed. Mm -hmm. This is his left shoulder. Yep. Make me try to throw the ball like that. Let's, no. You get no excuses. Uh, uh, get follow through. Hey, don't follow through. Don't yep. follow through. Mm -hmm. Hitting Odell all in the back of the feet with the football. Yep. Hit the DB in the back of the head. Yep. Odell need to get up out of there. But I told you this. Skip, your guy. Your guy may be a middle-of-the-pack quarterback. Mm. That's what he is, Skip. Okay. He's a middle-of-the-pack quarterback. Yep. And I know I'm not giving him an excuse. The fact doesn't matter, Skip. Let's, let, let's just deal with it. He's average. Mm. This is a running team that plays defense, and hopefully Baker can make a throw here or there. Mm. That's what they are. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm. So you are predicting they will lose this Sunday at Chargers? I predicted that. You want some do on that? I do want some Okay, do well, get what you want. But I want the points, obviously, right? I you got Baker Mayfield, the, uh, the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. Yep. With first that pick in the draft. Yeah. Okay, my turn. I first guess this, and I'm going to last guess this, and you're going to be wrong about this. What, what are we wrong? Baker Mayfield went on a tear last year that was extraordinary. They went 8-3 and three as a team over that tear. And remember, he was on his fourth coach, head coach, and fourth coordinator in three seasons. And – he finally figured it out, unfortunately, because there was no more Odell, because Odell got hurt at Cincinnati, and that's when Baker Mayfield took off. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't two or three games. It was 11 games. They went eight and three over that span. He was 20 touchdowns to only three interceptions, and he capped it off with a playoff victory at Pittsburgh in which he had a QBR of 91, which was the second-best QBR in the playoffs last year. Over that 11-game span, Pro Football Focus graded Baker Mayfield as the fourth-best quarterback in the National Football League behind Aaron Rodgers and Deshaun and Tom Brady. I think that's pretty heady company, and he belongs in that company, but he does not belong with Odell. He idolizes him off the field. He becomes Odell-centric. He forces the ball to Odell because he loves Odell. He, and there's a part of him that wants to be Odell. They're not a good match. When he spreads the ball and gets all of his weapons involved, they are much more lethal. And again, you're right. They have the best running attack in pro football, mm -hmm. only better than the Dallas Cowboys, second in rushing. Just for had, yeah, just yeah, I think you had to get, get that, that in. in. And pro football focus ranks their defense the second best defense in the league. And yet Baker had a, I'm going to quote him, a piss poor game last week at Minnesota. And I think it had something to do with the left shoulder and it had something or maybe a lot more to do with Odell. Oh, man, stop it. They're Skip. just not a good fit together. They have no rapport, no wavelength, no chemistry. I don't know why. 
I just know they're a much better team without Odell. It makes no sense. It's counterintuitive because Odell is wildly gifted, as we well know. I can't and, tell why I didn't play in, in, in with Baker. Okay. You think Odell was a, was a C-class Get receiver? Get him up out of there, yeah. and let's just see what starts happening because I think a Super Bowl is going to happen. I picked them to get to the Super Bowl. I don't think they can win We'll take him in I Kansas think, City and watch you know, what happens. Okay, well, let's do that. Let's just see. Okay, we'll give y'all Miko Harmon and, okay. uh, and Pring and Robinson. Okay, we we'll want some other pieces besides that. We we don't need another receiver. We, we got plenty once Jarvis comes back. Well, what about a quarterback? We give y'all back backup quarterback. Y'all need that because mm. you ain't got one of them. Mm. So I believe that Baker and company will go to the Chargers and do exactly what my Cowboys did, <clears throat> win a low-scoring game. I got Baker and company 20 Home team 17, 20 to 17. I got the, got the score uh, Chargers 33 and the Browns 24. Mm. Well, so you, wait a second. So you're, you're saying that the Chargers are going to score 33 points on the Browns defense? If I didn't score, if I didn't Kirk know. Cousins, you, who's been hot lately, scored seven. It was 14 to seven at Minnesota last week. Kirk Cousins ain't better than Justin Herbert. Why no, you even I'm mention just him? Saying he's been hot handed lately. He almost he outplayed Kyler at Kyler. Should have won the game. His kicker missed a third. I want to know when you gonna update Re- Baker's resume because mm-hmm. you keep telling me what he did that eleven game stretch last year, but mm-hmm. you won't tell me when he updated his resume. Now you just told me yesterday that LeBron needed to update his resume because you can't base because based on last year, oh Kevin Durant and this one and that one's better. So yep. when are you allow Baker to update his resume? Uh, the bottom line to his resume right now is three and one going on four okay. and one. Is that updating? I'd say that. So, works, so if that's right? the, if that's the case, then why why are we talking about this man's shoulder being? Mm. Well, he had a bad game, and that was part of the reason why. I what did I tell you when I made my pick? I said I don't trust the Odell factor, and I didn't know how soon he was going to come back. And when he did, bad things started to happen. Oh, so he so that's when that's when Baker hurt his shoulder when Odell got back. No. I think he's been hurt for three games now. It ain't nothing hurt. He just average. Except that fact. It, it's hard, Skip. I, I didn't see average last year. I saw extraordinary. Uh, yeah, it is, you didn't see no extraordinary year, I saw extraordinary. You didn't see no extraordinary, Skip. No Odell. No Odell. I saw first pick in the draft. I'm on the record. You don't want the true Skip. Yep. Well, I, I, I want you to have that same energy when they just keep on winning games. And you say, well, I, I can't figure this in out. In spite of. It's because in of spite him. of. Yep. Because, because those running backs are going to run the air out of the football. Mm. And that defense is playing very well. Mm. It ain't going to be because of him. Mm. Cowboys winning in spite of Dak Prescott? Stop is that it. what you're saying? You wish Baker Mayfield was as third as good as Dak Prescott. Oh, he's near. Him. No, he ain't near nothing. Mm. Not no, he's not. Skip, he's not top. He, I got fifteen quarterbacks better than Baker Mayfield mm. right now. Okay, he's the third best quarterback in his own division. Mm. Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow better than Baker Mayfield right now. Yep, the two quarterbacks in the AFC West, the three quarterbacks, Derek Carr, Herbert, and uh, 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 my homeboy, mm. better than him. So that's six quarterbacks right there. Mox- I ain't even got to the NFC. Moxie, guts, playmaking, leadership, whip of an arm. Escapability, he's got it all. I get whiplash when he throw the ball. Like, damn, Baker, you threw another pick, and I watch the guy run it back. That's what I get. That's mm. the whip I get. Whiplash mm. for watching him throw it. interceptions. Boy, eleven games, you were eating a lot of crow uh, last year. Lot I did, uh, of crow. Uh, 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 yeah. Skip, uh, uh. we coming out the pandemic. You got to mm. update your resume. Mm. You got to update your resume. Once upon a time on this show, suddenly Shannon Sharp co-opted Baker Mayfield and started calling him Shake and Bake. And it was driving the bandwagon. Yeah. I got this. You know I work for a staffing company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I asked them when the last time you updated your resume. Yeah, in my part-time. Yeah, I know y'all didn't know that at home. Mm-hmm. I work for a staffing company. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I asked my potential client, uh, you, you update your resume. I see you haven't mm-hmm. updated your resume in a year. Mm-hmm. What's going on? I see you haven't updated your resume in six months. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. Update that resume. What did I say before the draft? Baker Mayfield should go number one. What happened? He went number one. And you're over there saying... What about Sam Darnold? And I'm still asking you. And, what Sam, about Darnold, him? and Sam Darnold looking better than Shaking Bake. Oh, is he really? Looking better than Shaking Bake right now. Oh, huh, boy, he didn't look that way at Dallas last Sunday. When did your, when did your guy look good? Huh. What game has he looked good? Whose guy? Your guy, Baker. Oh, Baker. I don't know. I got a lot of guys. Yeah, yeah I know yeah. you do. You, <laughs> and they're all the right guys. And ain't none of, ain't none of them look good at Stafford mm-hmm. and Kyler mm-hmm. and my homeboy. Yep. Here we go. I got right, Baker, guys. and I'm not backing off. Okay. You, well, you, yep. you go down with that ship. Okay. You, you, you're a great captain. No mercy.
You're all about to witness history. A heavyweight trilogy, there hasn't been one in the last 20 years. You want a moment where you can't take your eyes off the screen because you're so afraid that if you do one second that you're gonna miss the best moment of your life. You got the freight train versus the 18 wheeler. Carnage and mayhem. You have to be perfect for 12 rounds. I only have to be perfect for two seconds. Someone's getting knocked the f out. Don't blink. Just a day away from the historic rematch of Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder on Fox Sports pay-per-view. Fury is confident he'll retain the belt, saying the fight won't go the distance and he'll make Wilder quit. Now, on the other side, Wilder called himself rejuvenated and said he's dedicated to, quote, reinventing himself. We are now joined by First Things First co-host Chris Broussard. Chris, how much of a shot do you give Deontay Wilder this time? I think I give him a better shot than most. All right. I know a lot of people think it's going to be just like the second fight or maybe worse. All right. I don't think it's that simple. You know, people are saying Wilder has a puncher's chance at best. But I think there's questions about both of these guys that really make this matchup intriguing. Let's start with Fury. Number one, he had COVID in July. That's why the first fight was called or, you know, the fight was initially delayed because he came down with COVID. Has that affected him at all? Did that affect him, you know, during his training? Will it affect him in the fight? Those are questions. Number two, and you guys talked about this yesterday, his trainer says he's coming in 20 pounds heavier than he did for the second fight. Now, they're pushing it as he's just going to be stronger. We wanted to put that weight on. And that's possible, but it also could be he's not in shape. You know, and, and there were rumors coming out of about his camp before he got COVID that he wasn't looking good in training. We also know he didn't want the fight. He wanted to fight Anthony Joshua. He had to be, you know, Wilder had to basically force him to take this third fight. So is he taking Wilder lightly? Does he think, you know, I'll, I'll crush this guy easily again? And maybe has that led to him not being as sharp? as he was heading into the second fight. Then you go to Wilder. Obviously, the questions are the demons. All right, and you guys know the history of boxing is that bullies who have run through everyone for years, if they get knocked out in their first loss, they're never the same. It is hard for them to recover. We can go back to Sonny Liston. We can go to George Foreman. Now, Foreman came back, but it took him 10, 10 years and a religious <laughs> conversion yep. to get to get back to, you know, becoming a great boxer. You Mike Tyson was never the same after he was beat. We can even go into the octagon and look at Ronda Rousey. So has Wilder exercised those demons? And if so, will they come back once he gets into the ring? And then secondly, can Wilder, has he learned just the rudimentary boxing skills to keep from being bulldozed like he was in the second fight. I, he's obviously not going to become Sugar Ray Leonard, but has he learned better footwork? Has he learned how to stay balanced? Has he learned better defensive techniques? Has he learned to use the jab as a weapon rather than as a measuring stick? Has he learned better di and different ways to set up his big right hand? It, those things are learnable in a short time. If he can just has done that, then I think he puts up a better fight than people think he will. Now, I so what am I saying? I think it's going to be a good fight, better than people expect, competitive, and I'm going with Fury in a unanimous decision. And Wilder might catch him and put him down once, but Fury in a unanimous decision. I would say he always has a shot. Because when you're dealing with a guy that has this kind of power, even late in the fight, he can end the fight. He can turn the lights out of a party at any given time in a fight. And that's what normally happens in the heavyweight division. I'm giving him a, be a better chance, Deontay Wilder, a better chance this time for a lot of the reasons that you said, Chris. Coming in 20 pounds heavier, you dominated the fight. I mean, it's like you win a game. You play one team, you dominate the game, running the football for 450 yards. And the next game, you come out and say, well, no, we're going to throw it 50 times this game. What? Why? You dominated it doing that way. Why would you ever go into a fight after you dominated it one way and then gain 50, uh, 20 pounds? What makes you think 
Power was the reason that you, you needed more power. You knocked the guy out, Skip, you stopped him at seven. So clearly you had enough power going in. I agree with you. I believe what happened was is that because he caught COVID, he couldn't train. It set him back in his schedule as far as training, and he put the weight on, and they're trying to sell it as, oh, he wanted to get beefed up. We wanted to be bigger, stronger. Nah, because the thing was when you listened to him talk the last time, they said they had never seen Tyson Fury look so good. He's in better shape than he's ever been in any of his fights. And – after the most impressive fight, after winning the title, you're like, nah, you know what? I think I'll probably be even better if I put on 20 pounds. Who thinks like that? Now, where I'm going to give you some pushback, Chris, is that I just don't think it's as easy as you say for Deontay Wilder because he's fought his entire life this style. I'm looking to land. The jab is a measuring stick. How close can I get you to landing this overhand right, this one hit or quitter? So I don't know if he can be... Because Tyson Fury is a boxer. He's a very skilled boxer, a man at that size with the movement that he possesses. So I'm not so sure that Deontay Wilder can do all the things that you would need him to do in order. But he's going to have to be close. He can't just stand there, look to land that shot because Fury is getting off. So let's see. He says he's going to punch his arms. He's going to punch his chest. He's definitely going to punch him in his head, in his midsection. I want to see. I agree with you. I think Fury wins this. Fury can win this in a multitude of ways. He can win it by decision. He can win it by knocking him out. But I believe the only way Deontay Wilder wins this fight is by knockout. I'm going Fury. Mm. So I just heard my two friends run all the way to the edge of the cliff and look over the cliff down into the abyss and say, nah. That is dangerous. Nah, 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 I can't do I'm that. I'm good. I won't do that. <laughs> I, for one, am going to leap over the cliff's edge. Okay. I am picking Wilder to win this fight for all the reasons that you guys were trying to get to, but you couldn't conclude it. Mm-mm. Oh, he's going to win in a unanimous decision. Fury's going to win. No. This is the right place, right time for Deontay Wilder. Everything adds up to upset to me because, as you guys have pointed out, Tyson Fury did not want this fight. Mm -mm. He had to be dragged back to this fight by an arbitrator who said, hey, this language in this contract says you got to do this. I got to do this. I've been there and done that. I beat him fair and square in the first fight, right. and it was judged a split draw. But anybody who watched the first fight until the last round said, he's dominating. Mm-hmm. And then what happened in the last round? Deontay caught. finally <laughs> caught him. He rocked him and dropped him. And one of the craziest things I've ever seen happen in a heavyweight fight, Tyson Fury raised himself from the dead. <laughs> he got back up off the mat and said, I'm good. He's I, alive. I, I'm He's alive. alive. <laughs> and not only did he did he rejoin the fight, he started dominating he the did. fight again all the way to the close of the fight. And yet one judge had it 115-111 for Wilder, really? And the other judge had it 114-112 for Fury. And the other judge said 113 all split draw. I, I watched it and I said, I'm sorry, Tyson Fury is just better. And then I watched the bigger, better boxer just flat out right. dominate round two, so to speak, of this fight, the second fight. And yet I do believe in Deontay Wilder's supreme, severe pride. He's got as much pride as any boxer I've ever watched. Mm-hmm. And it's attached to supreme punching power. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the hardest puncher we've ever seen in the heavyweight division. I know it's hard to to sort of quantify that, but I'll buy that. And yet I want to make it clear. I am not shilling for Fox. This is a Fox production. When I tell you, I just believe that Wilder's going to win this fight because, yes, Tyson, he didn't want this fight. He he actually got COVID twice Mm -hmm. in the interim between fight number two and fight number three. And to Chris's point, this one got pushed back three months because of COVID. And then remember, the trainer the other day at the big media session, he volunteered. Mm -hmm. Oh, my guy's coming in at plus 20 pounds, at least 20 more pounds. Wait, he weighed 273 last time, 293, maybe close to three bills. (laughs) Right. 
And what was he doing? He was trying to head off at the pass the criticism that could fall today. Because you, they got yeah. the way in, Skip. Yeah. So when he take his top off, he going to be out there looking like the great white hype. You, you remember that movie, uh, Chris, where the guy still be like, whoa, right, what right. happened? He is. Okay. <laughs> so they, they so, prepared you for it, Skip. He already looked bad. Yeah. He already looked bad. Okay, but. <laughs> remember, Tyson Fury... Back in his younger days, he fought through depression. He mm-hmm. fought through suicidal thoughts. He, he had eating disorders. He, he had addiction issues. Right. He was a fat man at right. one point mm-hmm. who weighed way over 300 pounds. Right. So he got right, and he, he dominated fight number two, and now he's putting on weight. Well, don't tell me it's muscle weight. I'm, I'm not nah, buying that. Nah, nah. I'm just not buying it. Don't tell me you had to get 20 pounds bigger just because that'll make you more dominant. Right. It will not. Right. I think he's going to have stamina problems. I don't think he even wants this fight. I think he'll try to end it quickly just because he knows if it starts to go 9, 10, 11, 12 right. rounds, he's going to have problems. And because he'll want to win it, uh, to end it quickly, well, he opens himself up. Hey, for- he's, he's going to get rocked and dropped yeah. early in this fight. He's going to be knocked back on his heels. He's going to get stung. It's going to be more of a level playing field, I believe. And I think by round nine, Deontay Wilder will get him a second time permanently. He'll drop him and it'll be over. Well, the thing he's going to need to do with that excess weight, he's going to have to pressure uh, Tyson Fury to get him tired. You just can't just stand in front of him looking to unload that shot because now you get letting him box at his pace. Yep. You're going to have to make him speed up the pace and make him that, that – Carry that 20 extra pounds around the ring. Probably be 25, 30 come fight night, considering when, once he rehydrate, refuel. Agreed. Uh, man, he's going to be close to 300 pounds, if not over 300 pounds. But fear, but uh, Deontay Wilder is going to need to push the pace to make him have to carry that around the ring. And he's going to have to do more than what he did the second fight, as opposed to just standing in front of him, looking to land that one power shot. Mm. Yeah, Skip, Skip, I think what you said is possible because obviously we know Wilder has to knock him out. That's how he's going to win. And if that weight gets to uh, Fury in the late rounds, he's not going to be able to avoid those shots like he will early. And, and this is some support for your prediction. I was stunned when I heard this, but we had Teddy Atlas on our radio show last night, the great Hall of Fame trainer. Mm. trainer. He's picking Wilder, too. Whoa. And he's, he's comparing it to Rocky Three. When Rocky, you know, when, when uh, his trainer told him he hadn't beaten anything but tomato cans <laughs> and he had to prove he was a legitimate heavyweight champion and he went in and knocked out Clubber Lang. But that's the one thing, Skip, we don't know is how is Wilder going to respond when he gets in the ring, right? Is it, is it going to all come back? The fear, the, the lack of confidence because of what happened the last time. We could even talk about Roy Jones Jr., he was never the same after he yep. got beat. No. And that's tough to handle. When It's one thing if you lo- lose early in your career, you know, because you, you have no choice but to bounce back. But when you've done so much, knocked everybody out, thought you were invincible, and then it happens, I just don't know that we're going to know until this fight starts. Now, he looks good. I'll give him that. Wilder sounds calm, collected. Uh, he seems like he's in a good space mentally and spiritually. Much better than uh, a f- few months ago. Yep. Remember when they had the press conference and he had the headphones on? I didn't like that. I like what I'm seeing from him now uh, as far as the way he's talking. And he sounds calm and collected. So we'll see. I believe this is going to be his moment. And I believe that in his head and his heart, he gave himself an out from getting K, you know, TKO'd mm-hmm. that, that Mark Breland threw the towel in, right? right? He wanted to go on. It's not like he, he got beaten so badly right. that it just got stopped. He didn't quit. Right? His corner that, that's quit. That's what I'm saying. You, quit you, on you, him. You give yourself he the He legitimately out wanted to keep fighting. Right. right. You guys, this fight, fight is though. going to be great. We even got these cool signed boxing gloves from both Fury and Wilder. So be sure to order the fight on Fox Sports app They're and watch tomorrow night. Look at these bad boys. I might wear them to the fight tomorrow, right? (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) No mercy. USA Today released their list of the greatest NBA players of all time, and Skip's guy, Michael Jordan, came up with the number one spot. To no one's surprise, LeBron then came in at number two, followed by Kareem, Magic, and Wilt. Chris Broussard is still with us. Chris, did they get this right? 
They got it so right, Alex, that uh, my top five is exactly the same as their top five. Now, look, I know Shannon's going to disagree, but <laughs> a lot of websites and media groups are putting out top 75 player lists now, mm -hmm. right? Or top yeah. 50, top 20, whatever. 75th anniversary of the NBA, yep. I have yet to... I, yeah, I've yet to see one that doesn't have Michael Jordan at the top. And I'm willing, without knowing the list, I, I well, the NBA probably won't even rank them when they, they do won't. their 75. But I think Jordan, yeah, Jordan would be at the top. Jordan, nobody's had a perfect career. But I would say Jordan had the closest thing to a perfect career that we've seen in the NBA. He dominated in individual statistics and in winning. Bill Russell dominated winning, but not individual statistics like a Jordan. Um, Jordan had no weaknesses. I, I, there's no weaknesses in his game, you know. And, and so I think Jordan's the clear number one. My top five is the same. I think the other controversial one in the top five, because I, I bet a lot of people's four are, are like they have at USA Today, is Wilt Chamberlain. And he had two rings, so he won the championships. You got to do that. But I don't think we've seen an athlete dominate a sport statistically the way that Wilt Chamberlain did. Maybe Babe Ruth back in the day. But remember, the leagues were segregated. So Josh Gibson in the Negro Leagues, I think he could have hung with Babe Ruth to some degree. Uh, but nobody hung with Wilt. He's got the four highest scoring individual seasons ever. 50 points, 44 points, 38 points. All-time leader in rebounds per game. I mean, he just, it, it was ridiculous. We all know. I call the NBA record book the biography of Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. <laughs> He's done things that just will never be done again. The second five of this list is where I differ, differ with USA Today. I've got the same players, but my order's different. So at number six, I've got Larry Bird. I mean, Larry Bird was just awesome. You know, yeah, that Boston was. team that he went to, Won 29 games his the year before he got there, and with virtually the same roster as a rookie, he led them to 61 games, <laughs> 61 wins. And then the next year they won the championship. Uh, seven, I've got Tim Duncan. Now I've I've I like Kobe's game better. I would have rather if I was in one of their shoes, I'd rather have Kobe's career. For the grace, the style, he was, he's iconic, you know, even before the tragic death. Uh, I'd rather be Kobe, but Tim Duncan, I got to admit, you look at it objectively, I think he was better. Number eight, I got Kobe. Number nine, I have Shaq. And number 10, I've got Bill Russell. So it's the same five, but in a different order. Okay. I mean, I ain't got no problem with that. I mean, I, I can deal with that list. The only problem is when you and I going to separate, Chris, we going on the same path. We going to the same location. But where you and I going to separate, all of a sudden that you know you, you want to go in front of me, but I need to go first, <laughs> number two. Mm. Go, James, where it's at. It's a lonely path. It ain't no lonely path. It ain't no lonely path. ain't no lonely path. <laughs> but see, what y'all done, y'all convinced yourself. You said it over and over. Jordan, go. No. Jordan, 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 Jordan. Everybody it, thinks that you so what am I? Am I not a body? Am I not somebody? Yeah, you're a body. Like, That's about all you are. <laughs> I just, my guy's birthday is coming up this weekend, Skip. Yeah. I'm like uh, Reverend Jackson used to say, I am somebody. Mm. So with that being said, <laughs> it's hard to overlook. I believe my, uh, LeBron James is the greatest all-around basketball player that we've ever seen. His body of work, his resume, the 17 consecutive starts in the All-Star game, the 13 first-team All-NBA, the four MVP finals, the four uh, 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 league finals, second to Jordan. Well, Kareem has six um, uh, regular season uh, uh, finals and, and uh, two, I think, NBA, uh, finals MVP. Yeah, but it's hard to argue. The consistency. I mean, we got to, I mean, it's not like he's just 19 years in and he's just coasting along. He's still a top player. You will attest to this, Chris. No other historically great player that has played as long as LeBron James comes even close. Not Duncan, not Kareem, not Kobe, not Dirk. None of them come close at this stage of their career to where LeBron is. LeBron is still regarded. If not the top, people say to, uh, uh, KD, uh, Giannis, okay, fine. But LeBron is not out of the top three. Everybody believes that he's a, still a top three player. And you're 19. 
So when I accumulate, oh, when I put my arms around everything, Skip, and I got some long arms, put it around everything, mm -hmm. the only problem I got with it, one and two. <laughs> you can leave it, I, 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 I like Chris's five, his bottom five, five through, uh, uh, six through, uh, five through ten. Mm -hmm. I like that. But where y'all gonna, we gonna part ways, I've been parted with you. Okay. <laughs> it's finally my turn. I'm parted with you. Stop. I'm, I'm so shook up by everything I just heard. It's hard to refocus on the most glaring problem with this list. The, the disqualifying, horrifying problem with this list is who is ranked second on this list. What? What's wrong with it? LeBron James is a point guard slash two guard who is a lousy three point shooter. He's really a lousy jump shooter and he is an abominable free throw shooter. They're called free throws. In the last five seasons, four times he's been under 70%. It's embarrassing. It's disqualifying it for him to be second on this list. And this list is filled with cold-blooded basketball killers. Yeah, that's what Give me the ball it. and get out of my way. Killers, starting with that guy at the top of the list who should be actually on a list of his own in his own universe. He doesn't even belong, Michael Jordan, on this list. He should be on another one by himself. But LeBron does not belong at two or three or four or five on this Stop list. Stop it, Skip. I, I got him at nine, and I can make a strong case. No, you you, I, I, I got him nine. below Larry Bird. But let's just take the, the Laker legends, shall we? He's not better than Magic Johnson or Shaquille O'Neal or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or especially Kobe Bean Bryant. And Shannon, you brought up, oh, he's a better three-point shooter than Kobe. Was he a better shooter than Kobe? Help me out. He's a better player better than Kobe. Better shooter than Kobe? Better player. Let's just stop it. Player. We're talking about the closest thing to Jordan I've seen since Jordan was Kobe Bean Bryant, the late and the great. Right. And he's just better. He's more valuable. All four of those Laker legends are more valuable overall than LeBron James. No, stop it. I'm starting no, it. No, no, I'm sorry. No, Number no. two on this list, it's like political correctness run amok. Nah, it's, it's what, because what? they don't want to burn bridges to LeBron's inner circle. Inner yeah, circle can do what? Yeah, yeah, who run pro basketball and sports in general. Okay. <laughs> I, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Kareem. Okay, you Kareem, with all due respect to the great Kareem, Kareem missed the playoffs a few years in his prime, or at least once. He actually won. He, he, he missed the playoffs once in his prime. Can we even imagine that happening to LeBron James? Yeah, it happened. We the can't first even year fathom that. And most of most of Kareem's championships, five with the Showtime Lakers. You know, the last three, obviously, Magic was kind of the leader. Of that, not to dismiss Kareem, of course, because he's the sky hook allowed him to score at will late into his career. But Magic ran those last few championship teams. And so I can't put that's why I put LeBron ahead of Kareem. Will, I think you've even said it yourself, at times you wondered, was the heart there, right? I when agree. Willis Reed comes out correct. of the tunnel, yes. you know, with matchups with Bill Russell. Kobe. You're right. He Kobe was a facsimile of Jordan, but the facsimile is never quite as good. Like Kobe wasn't that efficient of a score. LeBron's a far more efficient score. Both were right. great defenders, but I think overall LeBron was a better defender. Kobe was a great individual lock you up defender, but team defense was had some question marks about that. So I, I just think I, I think it's right with LeBron at number two. But I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to figure, Skip. You, I mean. A guy that couldn't score has a higher scoring average than Iverson, Kobe, same as Kevin Durant, higher than James Harden. Who and said he, he couldn't score? You, Joe, but he not a score. He's not a killer. He's, He's not, not a killer. killer. He's the greatest driver of the basketball not. I've ever seen. But late game, he, he runs from the free throw line. He, he is the worst late game clutch free throw shooter of any superstar we've ever seen. He's the best. He's the superstar. He on there. He should Shaq. be disqualified. Sh what he, about Shaq? Shaq, Tim Duncan, Bill Russell. They're seven Real feet Chamberlain. tall. So, so, you, so was Kareem. He's the point <laughs> so guard. So was y'all mean. Huh? Y your point guard can't shoot 65% from the free throw He ain't line. no point guard. He's a three. He's the greatest small oh, forward to ever live. Oh. Well, that's not what I've been seeing. He dribbles the ball up the floor. Stop it. 
So was, was Scotty Pippen a point guard? <laughs> no, he's a point forward. You know what he is. LeBron was born to play point guard. He, he was, was born to close, play basketball. Closest thing to Magic since Magic. I'll give you that. Hey, Skip, you got to let this go, man. No mercy. Tomorrow, it's time to settle the score in a round three between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder for the heavyweight championship of the world. Tomorrow at 9 Eastern, live on pay-per-view. Buy it on the Fox Sports app. Now, with Jimmy G missing practice yesterday, 49ers rookie Trey Lance could find himself making his first career NFL start on Sunday against the Cardinals on Fox. Meanwhile, Kyle Murray looks to keep up his MVP buzz and help Arizona hold on to their undefeated record. So, Shannon, who will have the better career, Trey or Kyler? I don't even really know how this has this got to be a question, but Kyler Murray is, is, is already won Rookie of the Year. I don't believe Trey, uh, Trey Lance is going to win Rookie of the Year. Um, Kyler Murray is an MVP front runner right now. Um, he's going to be an MVP in the MVP conversation for many more years to come, Skip. And see, we've already know what Kyler Murray is. Kyler Murray is legit. There, okay. There's no, there's no guessing. Well, I wonder what we know what he is. We, we, I've seen enough to know Kyler Murray is going to be, a, is going to be a great football player for an extended period of time. We still have not seen what Trey Lance, we believe with Kyle Shanahan in this offense, he can be great, but we, there's no guessing. There's no guesswork with Kyler Murray. So for me, it's not even, and Kyler Murray has gotten better and better every single year. My only concern with Kyler Murray, he's a small man. Okay. And taking that kind of punishment. Okay. And given that, I don't care if he only plays 12 games a season on a 17 game schedule. I'm taking Kyler Murray. Mm. I told you that Kyler was the real deal when he was at the University of Oklahoma, and you did not believe me, and you did not buy in for about a but year. But Alabama spanked him. Hmm? But Alabama did okay, that well, too. You've right? been ridiculing him a lot on the show. Now you're saying he's it, right? I'm say- no, I'm saying compared to Trey Lance. Okay, but you finally came around to me after I told you Trey Lance was going to be the best of the five high pick quarterbacks this past right. draft. You said, I don't know, I'm not sure. You thought Mac Jones was the readiest right. to play. But right. now, the other day, we did this, and you said, you know what, I'm with you. Trey Lance is going to be the best of this group. I, tra- I take Kyle Shanahan and okay. his ability to call plays and what Trey Lance skill set. Okay, skill set. What is it attached to? Six feet, four inches, and 225 pounds. Mm-hmm. My only issue with Kyler is, can you withstand the beating that you are going to take? Because last year he could not. Right. And they got off to a rip-roaring start, and we had the Hale Murray, and then what happened? Right. He got banged right. up, and he was not the same down the stretch. Right. And they faded and missed the playoffs, right? right? Mm-hmm. Listen, Trey Lance is also the real deal, and he's a bigger real deal than Kyler, obviously. And if we could just quickly see what he did – in his first little soiree last week, did you remember the past? Yeah. He, he's got a bazooka arm. It's just easy velocity. Again, Debo just was wide up. They busted the coverage. But then the run on th- this run, this is some special stuff right here. It's not Kyler quickness, but at 6'4, 225, right. it's real. It's authentic. It's going to work at this level. And I agree with you. If you put around him the Kyle Shanahan wisdom, and and I'll go all the way to genius of Mm -hmm. the run game. Right, He's going to make that run game lethal, man, because he's going to be a big part of the run game with a huge arm. And again, he only played one game last year at North Dakota State, and he did play at North Dakota State. Right, I just see it and sense greatness here, and I think long haul, long run, He'll have a little better career than Kyler, who's going to have a great career. No, he ain't a better career. Off to the races. I mean, Kyler's already rookie of the year. Went to the Pro Bowl. He's gonna go to the Pro Bowl again. MVP candidate. Okay, but he got thrown into the fire right away for a bad football team, uh-huh. and that's how he easily ran away with rookie of the year. Yeah, but okay. he, but he, but he showed you even on a bad football team that he was special, even on a bad team. What, and, what have I told you about Kyler Murray? What I loved about him at OU, he's got that supreme athletic arrogance yes. that I love where he steps on the field yeah. at, at his small stature and he looks He's like he, he owns it. Yes. Like he walks onto the field like, I got this. Mm-hmm. None of you guys can touch right. me. Okay, that That's his strongest strength right. is just his football character and belief in himself. Mm-hmm. So I get that. But I think the other guy is so much bigger 
with such a bigger arm. Kyler's got a nice arm, but yeah, it's not a huge arm. Yeah, it's good, but he can flat out he, throw he, it. He, and he with those weapons they're giving him, Rondell oh, Moore and Kurt, and now they got A.J. Green to go opposite of D-Hop, uh, uh, the Williams kid that tied in, Skip, they're loaded. Okay. And the thing is that he doesn't take the big shot. He got it, it was a fluke accident how he got hit last year, Skip, because he was sliding, and the guy hit him from the back. He did. It, it was just a fluke ex- accident because he knows how to get down. That baseball career comes in handy mm-hmm. because he be sliding and going like 25 okay. feet. Who predicted one week ago that Kyler would upset the Rams at the Rams? Here. Well, Thank you. It ain't going to be no upset. Mm. No mercy. According to new reports, the Portland Trailblazers rejected a trade proposal from the 76ers where Philly would send Ben Simmons to Portland for a package that included three first-round picks and three pick swaps. The Sixers are still optimistic Simmons will return to the team, but the disgruntled guard has apparently emptied his home in Philadelphia as he has mentally checked out. Shannon, what do you make of this? Um, I'm not surprised because they know Ben Simmons won't out. So what am I going to do, Skip? And I know you got to get rid of him. I'm going to ask for the stars in the moon. And if you're foolish enough to give me three first-round picks and three pick swaps, so be it. That's what teams are going to do. They're asking for seven seven draft picks, eight draft picks, asking for all this. But they... And, and teams are not biting. The Sixers are not going to get not going to get any not going to get what they want for Ben Simmons. Okay, but the Sixers obviously need a star in return for a star. They need a player. They don't need picks. So this hit me the wrong way. Like, what what are they thinking? They're built to win right you're not, now. You're not going to get you're not going to get a star because there's no star that doesn't that wants to leave with his current location. You better hope somebody starts losing and maybe Dane wants out of uh, uh, Portland. But other than that, you better t- go to, go to Indy. Get Brogdon. Mm-hmm. Get Karis LeVert. That would be a good deal for you. Okay, but they don't need picks. They need players. What are they going to do this year? Just, just Well, how about trade Tobias Harris? Mm-hmm. You got a max. Got that guy on the back. People keep talking about Ben Simmons to play, play bad. Did you look at Tobias Harris against the Hawks? Mm-hmm. How he look? You're just trying to wreck the city. Uh, that's it for us, guys. Thank you for spending your Friday morning with us. We'll be back Monday at 930 Eastern. But don't go anywhere because the hurt starts <laughs> right now.